Xbox Two. It's being run out of the control. Okay, gotcha. All right, welcome in, guys. Uh, we have our first severe thunderstorm warning of the night right now. So as you can see, this is for our western portion of central Georgia. Severe thunderstorm warning for Crawford, Macon, Peach, and Taylor counties. That's all we can fit in the box up there, but this extends for northern Macon County, Taylor County, into Crawford County, parts of southwest Bibb, and that extends in a little bit into Houston County as well. So this is until 3.30 a.m. right now. And... So this will be lasting for about the next 35 minutes. And right now we are looking at moving east at 65 miles an hour. So really, really booking it all across our western half of central Georgia. And we're talking hail sides about three fourths of an inch in diameter and max wind gusts of about 60 miles an hour associated with this severe thunderstorm warning. So as you can see, a lot of lightning, a lot of heavy rain and something we really definitely want to note with this right here. You're starting to see a little bit of an S shape, if you will. So this is a very broad kink or kind of notch that we are monitoring right here as it moves into the western portion of Taylor County right there to the west of Butler. Looking at that, that may be indicative of any possible rotation with this. Again, this is a very broad area. You're going to need a very more localized notch of uh, inflow in order to get a uh, tight rotation associated with this, but nothing indicative of tornado formation right now. That's just something we are keeping an eye on, but this is nonetheless a severe thunderstorm warning with very strong winds associated with it, heavy downpours and frequent lightning. So as you can see, continuing to trek towards the east at 60 miles an hour. And let's see if I can kind of give you a time frame right here with our wonderful little drag tool right here. So east at 60 miles an hour. That's pretty fast right there. So just went past it right there. So we're talking time frame Buena Vista 24 or 259 rather 305 at Butler after the 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. hour Ellaville at 313 Fort Valley at 325 328 getting into Macon County Montezuma 338 into Warner Robins and Houston County if this is to hold together that long as you can see the polygon doesn't go that far extended into Houston County Unadilla 346 and Jeffersonville 3, uh, 353 so this is extending a little further south right here, but this still, if you're not in the severe thunderstorm warning box, you are seeing thunderstorms in this line of rain that is moving through lots of red, lots of dark red and frequent lightning. And you can really see the lightning coupling together right there inside the western portion of this polygon that we do have issued. So once again, for about the next 33 minutes or so is the severe thunderstorm warning as this is a fast tracking cold front that is moving in. This is our first severe thunderstorm warning of the night and part of a larger system that is moving all across the eastern part of the United States, but now making its way into central Georgia. We did have a tornado warning to the north of central Georgia earlier that I did throw out on Facebook and because it really had uh, that uh, definitive notch that we were looking at uh, that did form into a rain wrap tornado. So uh, Alex Forbes and I are here covering this event. And if we take it further down to the southwest, as you can see, going to have a east northeasterly track with all of these storms and starting to cross the state line into southwest Georgia. Now uh, these severe thunderstorms storm warnings that are in southeast Alabama just between Troy and Dothan. So all of this is still what's to come to kind of trek up into the southwestern, yes, southwestern portion of central Georgia. But uh, the possibility for all of central Georgia, we are all under a tornado watch still. So that means we have conditions capable of forming a tornado. Think about it kind of like a taco bar, if you will. If you have all the ingredients placed out in front of you with the taco bar, that is your tornado watch. But if you build it all together, and you start eating your taco, that is when we get into what we call tornado warning. So just kind of a little reference there to help you all understand that. But as you can see, widespread rain, lightning and heavy downpours associated with this right now. And we are continuing to keep an eye on the winds, as I noted kind of that uh, definitive S shape right there. It doesn't look like it has as much of a shape anymore, but still uh, really wanting to keep an eye on that main line of rain for any kinks or notches that kind of indent into that main line and uh, could uh, spiral up some rotation, brief spin up right there. So um, 
Alex, you want to take it away for a second? Yeah, Alex, um, if you can, can you, actually here, I can run over this computer and do it. Let's pop up that tornado watch. So this is going to be uh, for the next uh, several hours for most of central Georgia. Part of this is going to go until 4 a.m., the other part until 8 a.m., but all of our 13 WMAZ area is included in this tornado watch that's going to run for the next little while. So this is just the beginning of what is going to be an active morning for us here in central Georgia? So that's what we're watching for the time being. And then as we work our way later into the morning hours, we're going to be able to trim some of this away, right? So it's not going to be going until 8 a.m. for, say, Monroe County or Jasper County. It's going to be going until 8 a.m. for Telford, Wheeler, Trutland. So that's the idea is for the next five hours, we're going to slowly trim away at this watch as the storms come through. But obviously, as Alex was saying, as the storms come through, that's uh, when we're going to be watching for the severe weather to uh, take shape. And uh, that's what we're beginning to see now. So let's see if we can uh, drill this back down in here and talk about where it is and it's moving into the Butler area. You're likely hearing a lot of thunder, especially in western Taylor County, a lot of that in Talbot County right now moving in from Talbotton and now moving in towards the Butler and Reynolds area. And this thing is booking it. All right. You know, it, it's Alex was saying earlier, it's moving at 65 miles an hour. So let's pause this now and pull up the track. And this is what we're looking at here. I'm going to draw this from the leading edge of the lightning. So the rain's going to start well before the times that you see here. That's going to be at 60, right? So Butler at 307 for the heavier stuff. Reynolds about 316. Fort Valley about 330. Warner Robins about 345. So this kind of lining up with the timeline that we were talking about last night. Bon Air about 349. And uh, this is, again, going to be the heaviest part. Now, uh, the, the warning includes the possibility of hail, but I am seeing very little hail. If there is any that is reaching the ground, it is going to be very small. You see some of those sizes there, about a quarter inch. Other than that, uh, you know, not looking at much of a threat from that at the moment. It's really a wind threat uh, in this area. But Alex was mentioning earlier that there is some broad rotation there. I'm seeing that as well. That's uh, kind of that notch. Let's see if I can pick up that radar there. It's going to be um, you know, it, where we're watching for that, like right in this area, right in here. So to the southwest of Butler, this is not you know, a, a tornado warning by any stretch of the imagination. It's just broad rotation that if it were to tighten up, become a little problematic. And that is uh, closest right now uh, to the mock area and uh, moving towards 137 here in the next little bit. Um, I haven't heard anything from the National Weather Service on, on that uh, specific area of rotation, but you know, yeah. as I said, it was broad. And um, you know, Alex, the other thing that I'm noticing here, whenever you get broad rotation like that with all of his lightning, um, an uptick in the lightning, not necessarily uh, you know, the best news, but you know, something we're keeping an eye on. Okay, so um, yeah, Alex, let's uh, go up to the north. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been talking about this being a larger severe weather event. It looks like the National Weather Service did just issue a tornado warning to the north. It uh, does clip Tolliver County, right? So if you're in Hancock County, this is just next to you, uh, but that does not include any of our central Georgia County. So just a reminder that this event is going on uh, larger uh, or, or you know, a bit outside of, of, of our area as well. So we're not going to uh, worry too much about that one because that's outside of the 13 WMAZ viewing area, but it is just a reminder that all of this is part of the same system that is moving in and it'll be a possibility to get uh, you know, any of this you know, type of spin-up action with any of these storms, including this one that is moving into the Butler area that has this severe thunderstorm warning. So Alex, all the counties included within this, I know we can only fit four, mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> it's just off the top of my head, part of Bibb, Crawford, Peach, Houston, uh, Macon, Taylor, and then also into Talbot County. And where else? We, we go back also into the, the Columbus area. We got, uh, Let's see, where's the warning? Macon, Houston, Marion, mm -hmm. Talbot, Taylor, Chattahoochee, Crawford, whole bunch of counties included within this. Even a little bit of Houston County clip to the west of Perry right there at the bottom of the box, but uh, just showing the broad impact that the severe thunderstorm is really having it. And honestly, you can see extending uh, across to many counties right there in that uh, severe thunderstorm polygon. And that is just because of the uh, sheer speed of this, honestly. So like we've been saying, moving east at 65 miles an hour, that is definitely booking it in terms of severe thunderstorm. We have been uh, seeing that the system is moving a little slower than we thought. 
uh, in terms of the timing of this. As you see 3 a.m. right now, this is when we originally thought that some areas would kind of be in the all clear already, but really starting to get going in our western half of central Georgia right now. But it, it is here now and it is moving relatively fast, so that will be good in terms of the heavy rainfall that you are seeing. It's not going to have as much time to accumulate on the ground to create maybe flooding potential, but all the other forms of severe weather impacts are still going to be there. We're talking hail, we're talking frequent lightning, and we are talking gusty and damaging winds. And once again, we're continuing to keep our eye on the velocity to see for any uh, kinks or notches or uh, any in indication of rotation with this right now. It doesn't look like the stuff that we were looking at earlier, kind of that broad S shape is really uh, taking too much form right now uh, in terms of that. So that is good news, but still at the same time, this is nonetheless a severe thunderstorm uh, with 60 mile an hour winds present in it, uh, radar indicated in our warning right there. So that is definitely enough to uh, down trees, down power lines and uh, kind of create havoc as it does move into uh, basically the middle of Taylor County now. So really uh, getting closer and closer uh, to the town of Butler areas. Uh, also in Taylor County that are included in this warning, we're talking Reynolds, uh, Rupert, and then taking it a little bit further to the east, we're talking Roberta just on the north end of that polygon, Fort Valley, Marshallville within this, and then eventually Byron, which is just outside of the polygon right now. And we will continue to see if this uh, holds up shape and holds up intensity if this box were to get extended further to the east. But right now it does look like a lot of lightning is present with this. And typically when you see a bunch of lightning clumped up together, that is a good indication of heavy rainfall and possible hail signatures uh, as well. But uh, once again, keeping our eye on any possible rotation. And the good news is uh, it doesn't look like I'm seeing too much definitive uh, indication of any uh, kind of kinks or notches with that right now. So that is good news, but uh, there's still still a little bit trying to maybe have yeah. a, a tiny bit of rotation. I was going to say if you if we get anything, I can tell you exactly where it's going to be. It's going to be this little mm -hmm. notch right there, just like that. Um, but that that is extremely weak at the moment, so I'm not too concerned about it. But that, that is that that would be it. Alex, I tell you what, let's um, go up here to Morgan County real quick. Okay. I, I just want to show the, the velocity signature up here. Uh, what we're looking for might not always be the cleanest thing, mm -hmm. right? This, this is uh, actually this is Green County, Morgan, part of Morgan County is included in the warning. But, um, you know, it, you're not always going to get the bright reds and the bright greens next to one another. What we see here is, um, you know, obviously that, that tornado warning in place. Um, and we're not seeing a debris signature there, but that is, you know, the, the type of environment that we're in and that it's all, not always going to look the cleanest, right? So, yes. um, you know, it, uh, that's something to keep in mind as we're watching Taylor County and as we're watching all the storms this morning. You know, important to note that this system uh, has had a history now of producing tornadoes, not only to the north, we had one in Rockdale County through the overnight hours, mm -hmm. but also back into Alabama. Wetumpka, Alabama took a hit. Um, also, some spots south of Birmingham took a hit as well, and it's not going to be, you know, just this line. Let me see if I can grab my pointer. It's not going to be just this area here that is capable of producing severe weather and tornadoes. It's going to be all of this, all the way down towards Dothan this morning, and all of that sliding, you know, towards central Georgia. So as things stand now, this tornado watch uh, goes until 8 a.m., and that uh, the severe weather threat continues for all of our central <clears throat> Georgia counties. But what you're going to see here through the morning hours is, uh, you know, part of the area we'll say, we'll say starting up with up here, say Henry County, Spalding, Lamar begin to be trimmed away from the tornado watch, but that's not going to be top priority, right? Type top priority is going to be watching the storms for the National Weather Service and, you know, issuing warnings and figuring out what's going on and, and so forth so that, you know, they can keep the, the most uh, critical information updated uh, when it comes to it. Um, so, Let's see, they're updating some stuff, but that's up in Atlanta. That's not mm -hmm. a concern for us. Yeah, still a good uh, about 22 minutes left on this warning that has been issued. And as you can see, we started covering this maybe, what, about 10 minutes ago, and it was uh, to the south of Talbotton, uh, over, probably, I think it said 11 miles south of Talbotton. Now you can see that the most intense portion of it is almost directly over Butler and areas like Rupert. So they're really showing you how fast it's moving. In just 10 minutes, it's already moved a county over to the east. So right. uh, really just 
a very sufficient environment for it to continue uh, to intensify as well. Uh, one thing I've been monitoring throughout the day and into tonight, and we've really had a surge in it lately, we're getting areas of 70 degree dew points. So that's typically what we do see in the summer. Lots and lots of moisture, a very humid environment that this front is moving into. And ahead of this cold front, we are talking a bunch of lifts. So all that surface moisture and then the surface heating that we did get with some of the breaks in cloud cover earlier today, that lift is going to allow for all of that moisture and heat and energy to just continue to rise on up into the atmosphere. So that's uh, what we're really seeing right here in terms of the rapid intensification of the severe thunderstorm, uh, kind of from just a definitive line of rain and a few flashes of lightning into very intense rainfall, coupling of a lot of lightning and continuing to uh, move very fastly through the western portion of central Georgia. But like Alex has mentioned, the general direction of these is going to be east northeast as they do move on through in areas further up to the northwest after this main line of rain does move through you. That means your severe threat will be over after uh, the main line does kind of pass on through and we'll continue to tick counties off here in central Georgia as we uh, see needed fit a little bit before the tornado watch is canceled for a lot of these uh, counties. But the first tornado watch that we did get for our kind of northwestern half of our counties, uh, that is until 4 a.m. Now they extended that it originally was till 3 a.m. But as I mentioned, the system has been moving a little bit slower into central Georgia than we first anticipated. So 4 a.m. is when we'll probably start to see a lot of our northwestern counties ticked off that tornado watch. Um, and as you can see, stuff down to the southwest is really what we're wanting to keep an eye on as there is plenty and plenty of moisture available as it does trek further and further into the southwest corridor of central Georgia. Alex, I'll tell you something I see that I don't like. That like that mm -hmm. and just yep. coming in like that. That little notch right there. It's very weak, but it is a notch nonetheless, just southwest of Butler. Yeah, I'm trying to get it online. I get the right radar. It certainly looks um, I, you know, better in the sense of a, a better sign of a notch there from the Peachtree City radar. Mm -hmm. Wait, so for everybody watching at home, when you see the red and green, that's the Peachtree City radar. When I drag it a little more this way, it switches to the Jeffersonville radar. Mm -hmm. And we still have it there. It's just having a harder time picking up on the delineation between which way the winds are moving. But you still see that bright green and the, and the dark green next to one another. And that sometimes can be used as a proxy whenever you're... Um, yeah, you know, like you see something on one radar, but it's not on the other radar, but it still has that color delineation mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, definitely. When you're starting to see the brighter reds or the brighter blues uh, coming into contact with each other, the two deferring very bright colors that is indicative of strong winds very close to each other uh, blowing in different directions. So that's where right. you get your rotation and spin associated uh, with uh, tornadoes as such. So that's why we're wanting to keep an eye on those notches as uh, we see them try to form so right and you know something else to just keep in mind not only in this severe thunderstorm morning but for the rest of the morning is we have we're like eight inches over average mm -hmm. in terms of rain our ground is very saturated it's not going to take a whole lot of wind to knock a pine tree over i yep. mean this is george after all it's just you could probably push one over if you really wanted to mm -hmm. um so you know it just a reminder it doesn't take a tornado to to do it damage that's why we have severe thunderstorm warnings and that's why we have one in place right now in taylor county and uh, it looks like they're updating it here so they've cut out some of the area uh, that's going to be now for butler on uh, they didn't cut out any of our area but they, they just trimmed it back yep. um let's see hail 0.75 wind of 60 severe thunderstorm located near reynolds moving east at 65 60 mile an hour winds and penny sized hail uh and that is Tornado watch remains in effect till 4 a.m. Yep. Um, so they just cut off those west that, those western counties, so uh, Talbot County, uh, Marion County, and right. such. Alex, I tell you what, can you pull up the Perry Skycam and spin it around? Yes. I bet we will be able to see lightning here very quick. I um, believe it's already pointed there. Okay. If it's still pulled up. Okay. So. Let's see. Yeah, it's pointed towards the west right now. Um, there it is. So this obviously in Houston County, looking across, uh, I believe this far south, once you're in Perry, you're, you're looking straight into Macon County. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we're looking at the moment. Let's just see if we can get a couple lightning strikes. There, there you we go. go. Yeah, 
So look, in the next 30 minutes in Houston County, it is going to get loud. Mm -hmm. uh, the thunder is going to be rolling across Houston County, and it's going to be Peach County, Macon County, Taylor County, where we are talking about right now, um, and then eventually into Perry, Warner Robins, Bonaire, Kathleen, uh, even Macon. You know, we, we are, it's already raining in Macon. We heard it here for the first time in the studio about 45 minutes ago, right about 2.30, mm -hmm. um, and that is, you know, it, it's moving in as we speak. So um that's that's the live look there so you're seeing the lightning off in the distance there in houston county and that is you know from the storm in taylor county moving into crawford southern crawford really going to mm -hmm. be next in line uh for for this one and just kind of looking up to the north not really seeing as much organization of a definitive line of uh maybe a bunch of lightning couplings uh uh, stuff to the north is uh, looking uh, relatively uh, non-severe, I, I would say, right now. Um, mm -hmm. But obviously, the further north you move, we are seeing uh, the tornado warning established in uh, Greene County moving into, uh, I believe that's Oglethorpe County. Yeah. Um, and actually, there we go. We just got a new warning uh, to the southwest. So that's a lot of areas to our southwest and then going all the way to the western edge of uh cordial right there right yeah so um <clears throat> yeah that, that's where the storm coming across the chattahoochee river right now so mm -hmm. all this to say i think we're going to be talking with you here for the next little while <laughs> yep. um you know it, obviously with this line of storms as it's coming in we're uh it, it's not just our little section here that is severe it's um you know you've got the the tornado warning up here in atlanta or not in atlanta but in the in the atlanta area so south of athens um, you've got our warning here. Um, it looks like they're updating the tornado watch. Continue yes. tornado watch cancels. Okay, so they so like we were talking about, they're trimming out some of the tornado watch, which is good news. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can pop that up here. And that goes for one of our counties already, right there, Upson County. Right. So on this map here, you're going to see Upson County go away in just a moment. Um, so it canceled for Butts, Henry, Lamar. Um, Rockdale and Upson. So uh, for everybody listening to me here at the station, we're okay. We, we can cancel that dinger. Mm -hmm. um, there we go. And then even above this warning that just got issued to the southwest that includes uh, Cuthbert, Smithville, Leesburg, uh, starting to see some intensification in terms of uh, rain intensity, uh, lightning couplings. Uh, so that's going to be something we're going to have to monitor too. And with the general direction of it, it also looks like some areas in this current severe thunderstorm warning might be in the path of still some strong but not yet severe classified uh, thunderstorms that are moving on the kind of southwestern half of this line. Right. Yeah, Alex, I mean, the lightning. I, I just can't get past that. Mm -hmm. it, it just has exploded in the past 30 minutes. Yes. It, I mean, when I say it is about to get loud in Peach County and Houston County, I mean it is about to get loud. Mm -hmm. And taking a look at that uh, kind of notch that we were looking at earlier, still nothing really taking form. Uh, looks like there might be a little bit of a S shape trying to take place uh, in terms of the velocity to the south of Roberta, but not really seeing uh, anything uh, in terms of a strong notch that's kind of uh, denting into this main line of wind right there. Right. Which is good news. All right. Like yes, we, good we, news. We never want to see mm -hmm. that, but we're always watching for it because this type of system, if we were to see something like that, it spins up really quick. But yes. Very quick. Um, that's why we're constantly bouncing back and forth. Uh, to see what we can see in that instance. Let's see. Let's draw a new track on this because it's been a while and it's mm -hmm. booking it. Uh, so moving to the east at 65 miles an hour. When I say booking it, I mean booking it. It's faster than a lot of people go down the interstate right there. So. Yeah. All right, so Fort Valley 327, Warner Robins 339, Bonaire 345. This is going to be for the heaviest part of the storm. Again, the rain is going to start before this in these locations. Jeffersonville 352, Danville 402, Dudley 415. Uh, that is the timing on this, this storm here. 
And really, I'm timing out the thunder. I, I, I drew that based on the lightning, and the, you know, where the heaviest part of the, the storm is going to be. And just wanted to keep a close eye on stuff to the southwest of that too. But like I like I said, really that's what's going to be encountering our 70 degree dew points right. uh, down there, and plenty and plenty of moisture to fire on up uh, very quickly, just like this uh, severe thunderstorm warning did. But it does look like the heaviest terrain is kind of moving to the east of uh, Butler now, maybe to the south a little bit. Areas like Rupert still getting some pretty heavy rainfall. Reynolds starting to see that main definitive uh, line of the most intense rainfall, most intense lightning. So we're talking eastern portions of Taylor County into south uh, Crawford County, still all around Roberta and trekking further and further towards North Macon County and then eventually Fort Valley over in Western Peach County and Byron uh, at the end of the polygon in North Peach County and Houston County soon to follow uh, just after that. So uh, I'm sure the lightning will start to get more and more frequent on our Perry Sky Cam. Right. Let's see if we can pop that up real quick and see if we can. I got it over here. Maybe I angle it a little bit towards the north. Yeah. A little bit more. Uh, look, look at those flags there in the foreground. This southerly breeze. Mm -hmm. It hasn't stopped since yesterday or right. Sunday. Yeah. And I was telling Alex when I walked in this morning, there it is go. so warm outside. Very warm. Like, wow. There we go. There's the light show. Oh, I think it's trying to load the radar. There we go. You said you saw lightning there in Perry. Oh, yeah. So when I pointed a little... Uh, further to the north. I would say probably uh, kind of pointing the camera in the direction or vicinity of where Marshallville would be from the Perry Fairground or the right. Georgia National Fairgrounds. Yeah. So 3.20 in the morning. There we go. There's some lightning for you. And we've got this severe thunderstorm warning that is continuing for Peach County. Crawford County, where a majority of the activity is right now. It blew through Taylor, or is blowing through Taylor County pretty quick, but moving to the east at 65, it's really Taylor and Crawford right now. But Marshallville, Fort Valley, Byron, Warner Robins, Bonaire, Rutland, uh, over towards Jeffersonville, going to get very loud here very quick um, as this continues to move towards the east. And just because that is where the warning is, you know, we're still going to be looking at heavy rain uh, in parts of Monroe County, Bibb County, Northern Crawford, over towards Jones. And then also we were talking about this earlier down to the south as well, down into Sly County, Ellaville, Macon County. Like the majority of the activity right now is going to the north of Macon County, but we've got stuff behind it that will move towards Montezuma in the next hour or so. Um, and yeah, I, I still just can't get past that uptick in lightning. Mm -mm. I've seen a special weather statement for a whole lot of counties. So that's the thing. We're getting these statements and warnings issued and when we read them on our phones. It's just got like six or seven counties listed in it because of how fast this is moving and the polygons are going to be very wide from west to east stretching so um and once again a special weather statement a step below a severe thunderstorm warning but it looks like it's talking about something close over by where that warning uh, was issued to our southwest um i right. think that area i was talking about in between these two warnings uh, kind of around where lumpkin just to the west of ellaville i think that's what they're issuing uh they are the statement for you. So yeah, ba basically the, the special weather statement, which you don't see here on the radar, but that can kind of draw it in for you. Basically they filled in this gap right here and they're saying this spot there is 40 to 50 mile an hour winds with pea sized tail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and also uh, just an important reminder for these severe thunderstorm uh, warnings to take effect. Uh, the two criteria for it are hail, uh, I believe it's three fourths of an inch in diameter, one inch in diameter, uh, and then also 60 plus mile an hour winds associated with these. So uh, you have to have those two parameters in order to get a severe thunderstorm warning issued. So that's what we're seeing with these yellow polygons. That is the minimum of what uh, the effects of the severe weather has in uh, these yellow polygons like we're seeing in Taylor, Crawford, uh, Peach and Macon counties. Yeah, just zooming out, kind of getting laid to land that. So this continues up here, which is kind of curious. I just kind of want to see what's going on. This is Greene County moving to Oglethorpe. Still, you know, the sign of the rotation there. Um, but I don't think they've seen anything. Like, there's no clear drop in a, the loft of debris. 
which is good news for them. You know, it, it, we did get a tornado up there earlier in Rockdale County. That mm -hmm. was right around the midnight hour. Um, that was a confirmed on the ground tornado too. Yes, and I've seen some pictures of damage uh, from our sister station up in Atlanta, and uh, it wasn't nothing, that's for sure, uh, up there in Rockdale County. So just a reminder, you know, going to be a lot of people going to be waking up here in the next few minutes uh, because of the thunder outside. It's moving into Peach County now and West Bibb. And um, we, we've got this severe thunderstorm warning for the next six minutes. I would suspect that they're, they're going to extend it. Um, yes. Just based off looking at the velocity map and, and where some of the stronger winds are right now. Um, but if they don't, we are still going to stay with you here on the stream, at least while it moves through some of our most heavily populated areas. Um, so that's, that's the plan as of now. It's moving quick. It's moving to the east at 65 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is booking it. Let's draw a new track. And again, I'm going to be tracking the heaviest part of the storm, not the start of the rain. Um, and it's moving about like that. So Fort Valley here in the next little bit. You got Warner Robins Route 340, Rutland 332, Jeffersonville 351, moving into Irwinton 358, Danville about 403, Montrose 412, Dudley 418 is the latest timing on this. And again, we're tracking the severe part of this, right? If you're in Macon, you still have a thunderstorm coming. If you're in Gray, you still have a thunderstorm coming. You know, it, this is just the heavier stuff uh, for the time being and the, the stuff that has the warning on it, the winds. Uh, at 60 miles an hour. This severe thunderstorm warning, the tags on it are for winds of 60, and then also the potential for hail up to penny size, which is below severe limits, but it is still hail nonetheless um, this morning here in central Georgia. There and there's go. that new severe thunderstorm warning, just as we were talking about. All right, mm -hmm. so this new warning uh, includes Southern Bibb, Peach, Houston, uh, what else we got? Bleckley, Crawford, Macon, Taylor, Twiggs, and Wilkinson. And this is going to go now until 4.15 a.m. Uh, so this is not a change in terms of you know, the, the threat. It's just an extension. So what we've got now is uh, Byron, Warner Robins, Bonaire, Rutland, Dry Branch, Jeffersonville, Danville, northern parts of Cary included within this severe thunderstorm warning as this continues to trek off to the east at 65 miles an hour. Uh, 55 now. Or so. 55. Okay, yeah. so slowing down a bit. Still fast, but not right. as fast. Okay. So let's draw a track here with 55 then. And the good news with that, if we do have severe thunderstorm warnings issued with this and there is uh, kind of some rotation that we're looking at, they will make note of it in here that it is possible for that so severe thunderstorm to form into a tornado, and we aren't seeing that with the note on these warnings. Right. So here's your latest timeline. 329 in Fort Valley, 342 Warner Robins, 350 Bonaire, Jeffersonville, 356, Danville, 409, Nickelville, Nicholsville, 414, Montrose, 419. Uh, so still moving fast, you know, no doubt about it. Let's check out some of the, I haven't looked at this, the velocity here in a little bit. Yeah, the good news is nothing's jumping out at me. Mm -mm. Let's see if I can catch the. We had that little notch earlier near Butler, but that sense has faded away, which is good news. But let's see if, uh, what I'm, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop, actually. The radar and see if we get, I'm going to get a better look at the, this warning. So includes parts of Crawford County, really south of US 80 uh, in Crawford is the warning po points. So Zenith, Peach County High School, obviously included Fort Valley, FVSU. Um, then over into Houston, we've got Bonaire, CGTC, Warner Robins, Centerville, Bucky's, Byron, Robins Air Force Base, Middle Georgia Regional. Rutland included in the warning over into Twiggs, Dry Branch, Fitzpatrick, Huber, Marion, Bullard, District Path, Jeffersonville, Myrick's Mill, all included in this, Danville included, uh, Tarversville, and it stops right through Cary in Bleckley County. So while Bleckley County is included in the warning, uh, technically, you know, not. All right, it looks like we got another tornado warning just outside of, oh, they're, they're continuing that one up there, okay. 
Looks like they're going to expire that uh, original severe thunderstorm warning in Taylor. Right. Um, but still, uh, just because that warning's gone, we are seeing still some pretty substantial rainfall. Uh, gusty winds are still going to be uh, very prominent. And even after this, winds are going to persist and be very gusty, like we typically do see after the passage of a front. Um, so, uh, and plus, still stuff out to the southwest of uh, Taylor County, so not out of the woods yet. We will give you all clear whenever uh, we believe that all the most severe uh, weather has passed on by, and uh, a lot of these counties are taking off the tornado watch. Right. Tell you what, let's check out the sky cam. And just um, beginning to note here in Macon, here at the TV station, we're beginning to hear thunder as well. Um, so, you know, a lot of the activity still outside of Bibb County, but we're hearing the thunder here at the station. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're watching this camera now from um, the Georgia National Fairgrounds, and it's like every three to four seconds you get a strike of lightning. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell you what, Alex, let's see if we can pop up Atrium. Yes, and point to the south. Yeah. So a lot of people waking up right now. If you're just now joining us, it is 3.30, and uh, we are tracking a severe thunderstorm warning in central Georgia. This is going to be uh, for uh, Bibb County, Houston County, Peach County, Taylor, uh, actually no longer included in that, Bleckley, Crawford, Macon, Twiggs, and Wilkinson counties. Until 4.15 this morning, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing 60 mile an hour winds, moving to the east at about 55. You're now looking live from downtown Macon. Yeah, there's the lightning. No doubt about it. Uh, going to be a loud 30 minutes or so here in Macon and uh, going to continue to track this as it moves through. Um, and I tell you what, Alex, I'm going to go uh, run and check on something real quick. You want to carry this <coughs> for just a moment? All right. I'm going to get on the other computer here where uh, our radar is and all. So let me pop up the radar once again. Um, so as you can see, yes, lots and lots of frequent lightning, uh, even around here in Macon. And we aren't in the polygon necessarily here in Macon, but still going to see strong thunderstorms uh, moving in from the west, just north of this severe thunderstorm polygon. But as you can see, the most intense portion of it still pretty far off in the west of this yellow box that has been drawn. So we're talking areas like Fort Valley uh, going to approach Byron pretty soon, uh, just all around Roberta to the uh, east of Roberta and eastern Crawford County, uh, southern Crawford County and Zenith, and then going to continue to trek uh, into South Bibb, so Rutland, Middle Georgia Regional Airport, and then eventually make its way into northern Houston County as well. So we're talking Centerville, Warner Robins, Robins Air Force Base, Bonaire, and then trekking into Twig. So uh, areas like Dry Branch up in uh, the northwestern corridor of Twiggs County, Jeffersonville, making its way to Danville on the r very eastern portion of this polygon and continuing to trek uh, over into Wilkinson County near Irwinton, uh, Nicholsville and such. So not really seeing uh, any de-intensifying with this line of rain per se, uh, but the good news is like we have been mentioning, we have been monitoring uh, the relative velocity, looking for any of those notches, any of those indications of rotation, and we haven't been seeing any. National Weather Service hasn't made note of any with it uh, as well, but also we're continuing to keep an eye further down to the southwest. So as you can see, areas still like Taylor County, uh, Butler, uh, that area just to the south, Rupert, still seeing strong thunderstorms, just not necessarily severe criteria. And again, you need those two uh, parameters, uh, hail of an inch or greater in diameter or winds of 60 plus miles an hour in order to get a severe thunderstorm warning. But still a lot of coupling of lightning that you can see over here by uh, Buena Vista. Um, let's see if I can get my pointer out here. Um, yeah, here we go. So yes, all this lightning coupling together indicating heavy rainfall embedded in this main line right here. And that is continuing to stretch further to the southwest across the state line into Alabama as well. And then we do have another severe thunderstorm warning 
further down to our southwest, so areas like Cuthbert, Dawson, Smithville, Leesburg, uh, and really stretching from the state line all the way almost to Lake Blackshear. So that is really showing you how fast this is moving. Uh, like we said, 65, 55 miles an hour seems to be the speed that we're seeing these storms move at right now. And just because you aren't are you aren't in one of these severe thunderstorm boxes does not mean you aren't still seeing a strong thunderstorm. As you can see, that's a whole lot of lightning from Lumpkin all the way up to Butler uh, associated with this main line. So still thunderstorms and all this lightning obviously creating thunder a few seconds after. So that is definitely going to be waking you up because it is 3.30 in the morning and I am sure most of you uh, went to bed and now you are going to be woken up to the sound of lightning. So please tune in and uh, stay with us as we are continuing to monitor this system uh, that is moving through central Georgia here tonight. So, hey, Alex, we're, we're going to jump on 13 WMAZ real quick. All right. Um, so bear with us for just a moment uh, because the heaviest of the stuff coming through Macon and Warner Robins, we want to bring this to everybody on the air. Um, so what you're going to see is the, the screen's going to fade to black and then we're going to come up right back here on the stream and just, uh, just also on TV as well. So um, we're going to be doing that here in just a moment. Yeah, if you're watching us on this, okay, here we go. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Alex Forbes. We are coming on the air with this rear thunderstorm warning in Bibb County, Peach County, and Houston County until 415. You are hearing a lot of thunder outside. And the reason for coming on is, uh, you know, not, not a tornado warning, but we want to let you know what's going on because we do have this severe thunderstorm warning in effect for South Bibb, most of Peach County, on into Houston County and Twiggs County. And this is going to run here for the next uh, 45 minutes or so. But the lightning in this, there's just a ton of it out there. And we're looking at uh, that moving across Interstate 75 right now. So this severe thunderstorm morning going to go for the next little while, but also want to point out that right the storm continues to the north of it. So downtown Macon technically not included in this, but it does extend back up into Twiggs County. Also down to the south towards Marshallville, uh, looking at the, the storms continuing down there. Uh, joining me now, meteorologist Alex Pry. Uh, we've been uh, tag teaming for the last little bit. Alex Pry working last night, me working this morning. Um, and Alex, you've got to look at what's going on outside right now. Yes, I do, Alex. So as you can see, make it sky cam. Yes, that is a lot of lightning. It's happening every couple seconds here, and this is facing towards the south right now from Adrian Navicent uh, here in downtown Macon. So a whole lot of lightning, and that has really been uh, the most substantial impact we have seen with this so far. But obviously embedded in these severe thunderstorms, we do have damaging wind gusts. We have heavy downpours, but the lightning is really uh, taking form and thunder. Obviously, I know a lot of you are asleep. It is 3:30 in the morning, so that thunder will be waking you up. Uh, so we are going to continue to keep you up updated with what this system really is and it has been a large scale system across the whole eastern portion of the United States with this and as you can see stretching all the way from areas like Eatonton and Sparta in our northeastern counties all the way down to our western counties such as Taylor County down to Macon County and then we are continuing to keep an eye on all of this further down to the southwest getting to the state line of Alabama as you can see more severe thunderstorm warnings that are stretching into the southeast corridor of Alabama into southwest Georgia and I will tell you why that is important because we're going to pull up the dew points map to show you how humid it is out there 
there. We're talking 70 degree dew points down over there to our west and southwest around the state line of Alabama. So that is what these storms are running into. When you get this cold front, it has a lot of lift ahead of it. And what is it lifting? It's lifting all that surface, mo surface moisture and all that surface heating that did create energy earlier on today with the breaks in the cloud cover. So that's why you're seeing the intensification of this line of storms in terms of lightning. You can barely even see the line of storms with how much lightning is embedded within this right there. So I'll toss it back to you real quick, Alex. Yeah, and uh, timing this out, it is a quick mover across central Georgia. So this is the latest timeline in terms of the heaviest part of the storm, right? This is going to be uh, not necessarily when the rain begins, but when you're, the lightning really begins to pick up, you know, the, the direct strikes over you and uh, so forth. So Warner Robins about 347, Bon Air about 355, uh, over towards Irwinton 404, Danville 415 or 414, Nicholsville 420, and Harrison 434. So a quick mover crossing Interstate 75 right now. Obviously, we're hearing it here in downtown Macon. You're going to be hearing it in Warner Robins in the next little bit. Same with Kathleen, Bonaire, Byron, Fort Valley, probably over you at the moment, and uh, then moving into Twiggs County. So Jeffersonville, right about there. Uh, also going to be moving into the Dry Branch area in the next little while. But the good news is, uh, you know, we were talking about it earlier, that we're not seeing any clear sign of a uh, rotation signature right within this uh, uh, line of storms coming through at the moment, which would be good news because once we get this line through here, or it gets this line through your specific location, that would be the end of your tornado threat for the time being. Now, that's not to say it's the end of the threat for the entire region, right? It's still going to continue elsewhere, but that would be uh, the, the all clear, at least uh, you know once the, the, the heaviest stuff moves uh, over your location. So uh, let's uh, continue to keep an eye on this. Looks like we're getting a new special weather statement. Uh, it's to the north of this polygon, it looks to be. So okay. Baldwin, uh, Bibb, Hancock, Jones. Right. So that's uh, what we're talking about is new special weather statement that they are issuing for this part of the line here. And that is going to be for winds. Uh, actually, we just got a new severe thunderstorm warning that includes parts of Hancock County, it looks like. Yes. Uh, let's go up to the north. Okay, so here's this new severe thunderstorm warning. This is going to be um, so the, the edge of the 13 WMAZ area is right here and uh, it clips that just like that. But we're watching this and Alex, I'm picking up on a little notch right there near Lake Oconee. All right. And they did put a tornado possible on this tag here. Um, so we're mm -hmm. going to watch this closely. Let's see if we can see what they're seeing here. Looks like the radar is, oh, you know, it's right on the edge of the, the range pole. That's what it is. Um, yeah, so the good news is we uh, are not seeing any, uh, you know, a, a ton of clear indication of that. But what the National Weather Service did was they issued this severe thunderstorm warning, right? That clips parts of Hancock County, and they're watching a little area of rotation there near Lake Oconee. But for the time being, um, you know, we're going to focus on what's going on down here. Very loud in Macon right now, very loud here at 13 WMAZ. Peach County, you can barely see Peach County, right? <laughs> it's covered up in the lightning. Uh, that's going on there in Fort Valley. And what's going to happen here in the next little bit is that this chunk of lightning is going to be moving into Warner Robins, already beginning to see that now into parts of Twiggs County. And then Irwinton, Wil or Wilkinson County, already included uh, within this uh, over the next little while. Uh, important to note through the overnight hours, we have seen a tornado in Rockdale County. That's to our north. We've also seen uh, several tornadoes back across the Alabama state line. Uh, so that's kind of the environment we're in right now. And I do want to pop up here this tornado watch map because what uh, we've got in place is a tornado watch for most of the area until 8 a.m. Some other counties are going to go just until 4 a.m. Um, be curious to see if they alter that here before four at any point. But we did have Spalding County, Pike, Lamar, Upson County included in this, and they've already begun trimming this back, right? So we saw this tornado watch continuing for Taylor, Crawford, Monroe, Jasper, and for the rest of Central Georgia until 8 a.m. Now, uh, just off the top of my head, I think we're going to be dealing with storms until at least 7 a.m. Um, just got a note from Steve Nelson, National Weather Service tornado warning coming out for Peach County, just east of okay. Powersville. All right, so we've got a tornado warning uh, coming for Peach and Houston County. So if you are in um, oh, yeah. Fort Valley and Warner Robins, your tornado sirens are about to begin to go off. Um, we are uh, going to see this uh, switch to a tornado warning in just a moment. Uh, this is going to be right near Interstate 75 and Bucky's, it looks like. So there is your tornado warning now for Warner Robins. Houston, Lawrence, Twiggs, and Wilkinson. 
and this is going to go until 430 this morning. All right. So if you are in Warner Robins, if you are in Centerville, if you are at the base, if you are down near Bonaire, it is time to go to your tornado safe place right now. Um, you know, not five minutes from now. It is time to go to the lowest level, most interior room away from doors and windows. For a lot of people, that's a basement, a bathroom on the first floor. But the key is to put as many walls between you and the outside as possible uh, here over the next little bit. So let's get uh, to the velocity here. And this is, wow, okay. So this is going to be just north of Russell Parkway. This is going to be at the Watson Boulevard exit right here. This is 247, right? So this rotation is going to be right in this area. So 247 and 75 is where it is right now. Here is Highway 41, right? That is the county line for a part of the area, but then it goes north into Houston County. If you are near Galleria, near Watson Boulevard, near Centerville, I need you in your tornado safe place right now because uh, this rotation is happening. It's tightened up in the moment. The good news is we're not seeing a correlation coefficient drop out just yet. So we're not looking at any uh, thing that looks like it has touched down just yet, but the uh, velocity certainly has picked up and that is what's prompted this tornado warning now for Peach County and Houston County. So if you are in uh, Centerville, I need you in your tornado safe place right now. If you're near the Galleria, if you are up and down US 41 here from say even the Bibb County line all the way down uh, to Perry uh, is is now is the time to head to your tornado safe place. Let's see if we can get some more streets in here. This is going to be Madison Place Parkway, Gun Road, Eagle Springs Drive, Willie Lee Parkway, Thomaston Road, and here's Houston Lake Boulevard or Houston Lake Road right here through Centerville. Uh, so if you're close to any of those spots, now is the time to be headed to your tornado safe place. And this is the rotation signature literally right at the exit of 247 and 75. So just north of Russell Parkway. If you're mm -hmm. in Perry, you're OK. If you are uh, as far south, I think, as Bonaire, you are OK. But the, the thinking is right. This is Watson Boulevard right here. There's Galleria, here's Northside High School, Warner Robins, House and Medical Center would be right here. And this is going to be moving right across that area here over the next little bit um, and uh, potentially uh, cause some issues here. So Carl Vinson Parkway, Collins Avenue, Davis Drive. Again, all of these spots, I need you in your tornado safe place. That is going to be the lowest level of whatever structure you're in away from doors and windows, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. And Alex Pry, I, I tell you what, this is your stomping ground. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't give me any other landmarks here. This is going to be Watson Boulevard, uh, you know, headed over, up towards the base. Yes, definitely. You've already uh, touched on a main uh, amount of them right there, but we are talking the Watson Boulevard area more so towards the west. So we're talking Galleria Mall, uh, things like uh, Kohl's shopping centers uh, over that way, especially where Jim and Nick's, the new coffee place, all those areas have just opened up. We're looking more so at the western part of Watson Boulevard right there, but further down, uh, really around where 41 kind of comes in contact with Watson Boulevard uh, down there. So we're talking uh, kind of the public shopping center, the CVS at that intersection, and continuing to move towards the east, uh, kind of towards uh, Osegan, just behind uh, Watson Boulevard. Uh, I'm just trying to list off as many uh, kind of landmarks as I can over on that side of town. But yes, very uh, industrialized area, lots of restaurants, lots of businesses. Uh, that is definitely uh, where we are seeing this uh, signature of strong winds heading over uh, that way. So just past 75 uh, now, and we are looking at it moving into a relatively uh, populated area in terms of uh, industry, stores, restaurants, uh, et cetera. So that is the general track that we are seeing of this right now. So like I said, western end of uh, Watson Boulevard. The good news is I'm not seeing anything indicative of a confirmed tornado on the ground, but still this is a tornado worn storm. So definitely find your safe space. Uh, I know a lot of neighborhoods are over uh, go go around that play or that way. We're talking interior most rooms, hallways where you can be guarded by the most interior walls that you can uh, within your home away from windows and continue to hunker down in that space until we give you the all clear with that. Alex. Yeah, and uh, this obviously is going to be moving through Warner Robins here in the next little bit, but it's not going to stop there, right? This tornado warning goes until 430. So we want to give you the heads up. If you are in Jeffersonville, it is time to head to your tornado safe place. If you are in Nicholsville, I think you've got a few minutes, but we're watching it closely. Bullard 355, Jeffersonville 403. So yes, it's in Warner Robins, but you know, weather doesn't follow the roads, right? It's going to be in your area pretty quick, uh, and that is the, the latest information there. Uh, so again, Warner Robins right now, uh, tornado warning in 
place lowest level most interior room away from doors and windows put as many walls between you and the outside as possible and that's where you need to be until we give you the all clear if you are watching us on TV and your TV is close to it saying outside wall just turn the volume up and we'll give you the all clear uh, and you'll be able to hear us there but still in Macon right now I want to emphasize Rutland, Macon, Lizella, or not Lizella, over towards a dry branch. Uh, a lot of thunder, a lot of lightning. You are not included in this tornado warning. Uh, this is going to be just Houston County and then into Twiggs County. And I also want to point out, you know, we keep saying Houston County and, it, you know, that, that is where the storm is. But where it's not is Perry, Von Air. Henderson, right? The storms haven't even arrived down there. This is literally right along Watson Boulevard, uh, Houston Lake Road, uh, and uh, over towards Gun Road right now. And it is moving uh, right toward Robbins Air Force Base, right? The, the base is right here. And the, the area of rotation we're watching is right there. So just north of Watson Boulevard uh, and uh, moving towards 129, about to cross the Okmulgee River. That's the county line here between Houston County and Twiggs County. Um, so yeah, north of Watson Boulevard, it looks like right now. Let's see if we can get any more. And Alex, it, it does look weaker. Let me see if I can back this up a little bit. Yeah, you can definitely still see a little bit of a notch in the, uh, what they were thinking is rotation, but uh, not seeing any confirmed reports of a tornado on the ground with it, but definitely right. moving further down to the east of Watson Boulevard now as well. What Alex is talking about here is you see how the, the red kind of bends in like that, and that kind of matched up with where that velocity signature is. The good uh, thing about uh, the, the location that it's in is that the radar is right there in Jeffersonville, so we're getting a really good sight of the storm, and, um, and that's where we're seeing it right now, just north of uh, Warner Robins. So... Yeah. Um, I think the key here right now is if you are watching us from Robbins Air Force Base, all right, uh, I need you to go to your tornado safe place. This is moving in just as we speak. There's a new radar scan there, Alex, and it looks like that notch is still there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if we can get the velocity signature here. Looks like the velocity is trailing behind just a little bit, but that would be the notch right there. Let's check in on the, uh, any kind of debris that we would see in a situation like this. And the good news is we're not seeing anything stand out. What, what you would see if we were seeing potential lofted debris is a, is a ball you know, about the size like that. Uh, over you know, northern parts of Warner Robins with blues and whites in it, and we're not seeing that, which is good news. Uh, so this is not a confirmed tornado warning, but it's still, uh, the rotation's still tight enough. Um, Steve saying he's seeing a small TDS. It was at 349 Centerville. Oh, he might be talking about this right here. It might be really small. It might be that right there. Yeah, that's kind of what I was looking at too. So that would be just north of Watson Boulevard to the north east of Galleria. Uh, that would be, so if, if, if a tornado had touched down, that would have been right along Carl Vinson Parkway because what happens is, say, you know, the tornado touches down, it picks up some debris and then it scans it, you know, just a little beyond where that happens. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, continuing to track, definitely passed on the northern uh, side of Watson Boulevard now, but areas like Carl Vinson Parkway, Alberta Road, uh, continuing to trek kind of towards the east northeast. So areas like Northside High School, Green Street are now in the vicinity of that as it continues to move through uh, the northern portion of Houston County and then getting over to areas like North Houston Road, uh, kind of north side middle area. Um, we're talking uh, new uh, Warner Robins Rec Department area. And then eventually after that, it continues to move and move that way. We're talking uh, 247 near uh, Robins Air, Air Force Base right there. You can't really see much. I'm really trying to localize a lot of the local landmarks uh, there, but uh, really getting closer and closer to 247 in the western edge of the base and uh, kind of on uh, that uh, city center area. So not necessarily commercial circle. It looks like it's going to go to the north of that, uh, but definitely going into neighborhoods and such that are on the north side of Watson Boulevard. Right. And uh, it looks like they just updated the tornado warning. Let's see what they did here. This is now a confirmed tornado. All right. All right. So the uh, National Weather Service has confirmed the tornado. Uh, so this tornado warning now continues for Houston County towards Twiggs County and Wilkinson County. If you are in Jeffersonville, you're going to be next in line over the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, that's obviously where the radar is. Uh, but we do now have from the National Weather Service a confirmed tornado. And Alex is just looking at the structure of the storm here on the reflectivity. Watch you got this S. Mm -hmm. kind of like that and that's kind of one of your most indicative signs that you can get whenever you end up in a situation like this. So if you are in Twiggs County now, you are next in line. 
Uh, so if you are uh, in, obviously Jeffersonville, but even uh, sooner, Bullard, Marion, right along US 23, <coughs> right? So we'll say from the Sagoda Road exit uh, down, so from Sagoda Road on US 23 down through Bullard, uh, now is the time to be headed to your tornado safe place because if we do have something, it is coming across the base right now and it is coming across the Okmulgee River as we speak. Uh, so let's get some more roads in here. First, let's check out the velocity and um, so that's going to be literally right over Robbins Air Force Base. Yes. Uh, and moving toward New Bullard Road, Alton v. White Boulevard, Friendship Church Road. We've got Huston Road, Gold Road, County Road 82, Wedlow Woods Road. If you are hearing your, any roads that are close by to you, you need to be headed to your tornado safe place right now. This is a confirmed tornado warning moving into Wilkinson County. Um, and into the Bullard area. Mm -hmm. And just a quick note um, for everybody in our newsroom. So we, we're saying confirmed tornado. Where, the, where we think damage would be, would be north of Watson Boulevard, north of House the Medical Center. Uh, I believe Carl Vinson Parkway. So along Carl Vinson Parkway, um, and that general area just north of Watson Boulevard. That's where uh, the National Weather Service was able to pick up on a, a or the radar rather, a, a debris signature there. The good news is, you know, what we did see that they were able to confirm. That western half of the warning. Uh, so Centerville, Galleria, out of that tornado warning now. Right. And Alex, actually looking back at this now, this might have been the start of the TDS right here. Mm -hmm. So this was at 346. It's now 354. So if we're looking for uh, damage that would be right along Watson Boulevard, that would be right where that new Jim and Nick's is, mm -hmm. uh, where the Seven Brew is uh, over towards Target. Target's like right here, just south of the Galleria. Um, it would have gone right at the intersection of 41 and Watson. Right. It would have gone right over the Galleria and is now in Wilkinson County. All right, excuse me, Twix County. So the good news is, I, I think just looking at this, looking at the um, radar and where the velocity stands now, in terms of a tornado threat, I think that is coming to an end in Houston County. Um, it, it is the, the, the tornado threat has moved over the Okmulgee River. So while it's still storming outside, if you are in Houston County, uh, sp specifically at Warner Robins, where we were talking about, uh, I think your tornado threat has come to an end um, and is now, escalating in places like Bullard and Jeffersonville. The dinging you're hearing is a new severe thunderstorm warning, Alex. You've got that. Yeah, uh, I'll pull that up. Yeah, uh, you want to pull it up over there real quick? I'll read it and see what, we, uh, what we're dealing with. Yes, so uh, right now, new severe thunderstorm warning has been issued. Uh, Baldwin, Hancock, Washington, and Wilkinson counties. This is to the north of that tornado worn storm and that confirmed tornado that we did see in Houston County. Uh, so areas like Cooper's, Milledgeville, uh, getting over into Linton, Deep Step, uh, in southern Hancock and western uh, Washington County is right there. As you can see, some heavy rain associated with this. Maybe not as much lightning right there. Um, and I will pull up the velocity real quick just to see if we're seeing uh, any notches with that. Um, yeah, Alex, they put the tornado possible tag on this warning. All right, so yeah, same thing that we kind of just saw with the storm that originated in Peach County, I think to the east of Powersville and then trekked into the northern portion of Houston County. They put the tornado possible tag on it and then we did eventually have a confirmed tornado warning. So we're going to keep a close eye on that as we continue uh, to get updates on that. Yeah, so let's uh, bring this back down to uh, this is going to be Twigs County now. I think as I was saying earlier, if you are in Houston County, if you're in Warner Robins, we have this tornado warning still technically active for you, but I'm going to give the all clear from a tornado threat, right? The storm is not over, but a tornado threat all clear from Warner Robins. Um, let's flip this back over to the velocity real quick, and I'll show you where we're watching for this uh, tornado threat now. It's going to be this area right here, so near Bullard, moving towards Interstate 16. Mm -hmm. um, so this is going to cross, this threat is going to cross Interstate 16, very close to Field Road, where that hap where that bridge is. Um, and I think, at least for the time being, it does look like it's weakening, but for the time being, just north of the Marion area. But if you are still in Jeffersonville, just because we're seeing this downward trend at the moment does not mean we're given the all clear anywhere out here because this type of environment, it's very easy to get another uptick in, the, in a situation like this. But we have not seen as well 
another dropout of the correlation coefficient, which mm -hmm. is uh, a good sign as well. So at one point, this tornado had been on the ground back into Warner Robins, somewhere near Watson Boulevard, Carl Vinson Parkway in that area. And uh, it does not look like it is on the ground at the moment, but still the threat for threat of rotation is still there. And that's why this tornado warning continues now for Twiggs County from the Jeffersonville area right down to Danville. So the rest of Interstate 16 from Sagota Road down to the Bleckley County line uh, included within this tornado warning and then also into Wilkinson County now. So the, the part of Wilkinson County, it's a big area, right? We're not talking about Gordon or Irwinton. It looks like they're updating this and they've taken off the confirmed tag. All right. So um, that's good news, just as I was describing that it doesn't look like we have a tornado on the ground at the moment. But again, the part of Wilkinson County we're talking about is from Irwinton down to Nicholsville over to Danville. This is where it's going to be headed in the next 20 minutes or so. But if you are in Jeffersonville, I need you in your tornado safe place right now. That's going to be uh, lowest floor away from doors and windows. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. I think I've got actually, uh, let's see if I have it loaded in here. Yeah, here's, uh, here are some tips for you in, in terms of where to go. This is going to be inside lowest floor of a sturdy structure away from doors as windows putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible and that's going to be here for twiggs county into wilkinson county and uh that's going to continue until 4 15 or 4 30. um the tornado warning yes. 4 30. Yes. 4 30. okay so uh again we're going to slowly trim that back and uh and then uh, watch that as it moves through. But as of now, again, we're giving the all clear to Houston County in mm -hmm. terms of a tornado threat. So if you are in northern Houston County and you suck or you, you went to shelter, you went to the lowest floor, it's OK to come out of that area now. The storm is continuing outside, but the tornado threat has come to an end. And that is now moving into Twiggs County and crossing Interstate 16 uh, as we speak. So this is going to be um, Again, this just does not look like how it did, which again is good news, right? We don't want a tornado to be on the ground, but it, it does not look as strong as it did earlier. If we were seeing anything, it would be in that area right in there. Let me flip this over to the base velocity and see if that looks any different. Yeah, not really. Uh, so sometimes with the storm relative velocity, if the storm motion isn't exactly correct, the velocities might not show up the exact way uh, that um, you know, it, it is actually happening outside. Uh, but I, I'm seeing this very broad and certainly not like what it was in Houston, Alex. Yeah, definitely not. So it's getting um, closer and closer to the radar, though. So it's uh, right. Yeah, and that's the other thing. With the radar right here in Jeffersonville, we've got a front row seat to this. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we're not looking at anything that's really high up in the atmosphere. We are looking right at it. It's like watching a movie in a movie theater, right? We, that's the, at least the benefit of the location uh, at, at the time being with its proximity to the radar. Uh, so that is uh, worth noting. But still, nonetheless, some very strong winds in this, right? This bright green color here, that's going to be the leading edge of some really strong winds. And uh, we're going to continue to watch that. Because, you know, this is Georgia after all, right? Our ground is saturated. We have picked up a ton of rain since the start of the year. And um, it's not going to take a lot to knock over some trees. Now, yeah. luckily, at least at the time being, this area where the wind is is, um, you know, over the Okamogee River and where the, the preserve is. So you're not looking at a ton of areas impacted by that here at the exact moment. Um, and I tell you what, I... I'm actually curious about something now that I'm thinking about it. I don't know if um, maybe Alex, who I believe is, is in the booth, could we pull up the, the power map and see if there are power outages in Warner Robins? Because if we saw something, that would have impacted. OK, yeah, so they're going to work on that. And we're, we're going to see if, if we can pull that up. Mm -hmm. um, this just dawned on me in, in the moment. You know, it, Obviously, if power lines were involved, uh, that's going to show up there on the power map. Um, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, Taking in a lot of information at once. All right, so continues tornado warning. That was three. OK, so that's when they dropped the confirmed tag. Uh, <coughs> issues. OK, OK. All right, so we are uh, good news. Amanda, our producer, confirming that there's not many outages there and Warner Robins. Um, also, yeah, OK. So that, that's good to know in that area. So. Um, at least that's uh, a point of some good news at the moment. There's so again, Twiggs County needs you in your tornado safe place. This is moving into Jeffersonville uh, over towards Wilkinson County. Uh, technically, this tornado warning goes until 430. It's 402. But, um, you know, if this continues on its trend, it just does not look like it did. Um, 
actually a note now that there are power outages on the Flint EMC side, but not on Georgia Power. Uh, Amanda, can we see if we can pull up the Flint EMC map potentially? Because if that's the case, you know, we'll, we'll want to show that. Um, we're we're going to work on that and see if, yep, see if we can uh, get that up. So again, Jeffersonville, Nicholsville, uh, technically a ways out, but this is where that tornado threat would exist. Again, uh, that warning still continues back into Warner Robins, but we're giving the all clear for Houston County from a tornado threat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be Twiggs County and into Wilkinson County. I tell you what, Alex, you want to drill it down in and see if we can get some roads as this, if it's there's something there, would be crossing Interstate 16 right now. Yes, absolutely. So around Interstate 16, so we're looking at the Marion area uh, down in Twiggs County. Let's try to take it a little more local. Uh, so the Bullard Road area, that uh, obviously a major road right off of Interstate 16. Um, we're talking about Marion Ripley uh, Road down there, uh, Noah Thomas Road, and continuing to trek to the east uh, further and further towards uh, downtown Jeffersonville. Uh, so Sawage Drive, Glover Road, um, and really just straight along uh, Bullard Road is what we are looking at the general direction of this. So if you live off Bullard Road and anywhere further to the western end of downtown Jeffersonville or anywhere around Jeffersonville, once again, be in your tornado safe space. You will want to get to an interior most room guarded by the most interior walls that you can get away from windows and ride this out until we give you the all clear with that. Yeah, Alex, I want to take you now to uh, that power outage map from Flint EMC. So let's zoom down into Warner Robins here, and it looks like that outage is going to be uh, right along Watson Boulevard. So 1.2 thousand customers, uh, that little symbol is right over 41 in Watson Boulevard. I don't know, Amanda, is this the producer computer? Can we zoom that in uh, down into Warner Robins? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. Uh, maybe a little more over towards Centerville. Uh, let's see, let's go over to the right a little bit. Yeah, see uh, 75 and Watson Boulevard. So that is where we had that tornado debris signature. So those power outages are gonna be between Galleria and 41. So right where it Publix is, uh, over towards where that new Jim and Nick's is, uh, that is where we had the debris signature and where we're seeing the power outages now. Also down 41 towards Bateman Road, Terry Street, uh, over towards, uh, this is gonna be uh, Tommy Stonlicker Drive included mm -hmm. in that, <clears throat> but it stops right at the Galleria. So it looks like we might have had a brief touchdown uh, somewhere in the vicinity of US 41 and Watson Boulevard. And it looks like it extends further down to the south of 41, kind of getting closer and closer to Russell Parkway. So we're talking areas uh, where Flint Energies is really building uh, that big uh, manufacturing plant off of Highway 41. And uh, yeah, just to the northeast of Bucky's, if you will. So go up I-75 a little bit. We're talking to the east of that area. Right. Now it is some, uh, if we're looking for the good news in this, it's that it doesn't go beyond that point, right? So we're not looking at widespread power outages, you know, over towards Carl Benson or up towards, you know, Houston Lake Road or anything like that, uh, at least for the time being. Uh, so we'll, we'll give that some time to update. I'll tell you what, let's hop back over to the radar real quick because we do still have this tornado warning continuing. This is going to be for Twiggs County here, moving into the Jeffersonville area. They've just updated this, uh, and they have removed Houston officially. So we've been given the all clear from Houston. Now Houston County is officially out of the warning. So Lawrence, Twiggs, and Wilkinson uh, for the next little bit. The most imminent threat is going to be in the Jeffersonville area, moving into uh, Wilkinson County as we speak. Even though Lawrence County is included in this, this is not moving towards Dudley or Dublin. If Lawrence County does end up seeing this, it would be the northern parts of the county. But again, the trend here over the past little bit has been that it has been weakening and we check out the, uh, any kind of debris and we're not seeing anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, this would be just past the Interstate 16 now. So you know, if there was a tornado on the ground, there would be plenty of leaves and trees and things for it to make debris. And we're not seeing that on the radar, which is some good news uh, this morning as it's moving into the Jeffersonville area. Still a ton of lightning, and I mean a ton, from Twiggs County through Houston. It is still pouring in Peach County, getting a pretty good storm down in Perry. And uh, all of this moving towards the east now. Let's see if we can get uh, the latest... Alex, do you know the speed on this tornado warning? Let's see if we can draw a new track. Yes, it is moving east at 60 miles an hour. East at 60. So let's draw it about like that. And again, the cities you're going to see pop up here are not necessarily all in the warning. In fact, most of them are not. Um, but this is going to be the area where this rotation right, is moving towards. So district path about 406, Danville about 414, Tucker's Crossroad 433, Wrightsville. 440, right? So Wrightsville way out in Johnson County, and this is in Twiggs County at the moment, but that just shows you how fast it's moving. 
Uh, so here we are at 4.07 in the morning and we're talking about it moving through Kite over on the east side of Johnson County at 4.55. So within the hour, it's going to be moving towards Emanuel County. Uh, but obviously that tornado warning cuts off at 430 right where, uh, you know, the, the red line is right there just past Nicholsville. Uh, so some good news there. And also the severe thunderstorm warning that's associated with the tornado warning uh, further back to the west uh, that is going to expire. The National Weather Service did uh, just tell us that. So 4.15 okay. a.m. that yellow box will go away and we will start just solely worrying about uh, this red tornado warning box that you do see. So once again, uh, not seeing the indication of confirmed tornado on the ground anymore, which is good news and not seeing any indication of flying debris on our correlation coefficient. So that is also good news, but still continuing to monitor this. Uh, throughout the duration of the warning until 430 in the morning and really moving to the through the eastern portion of Twiggs County now into southern Wilkinson and then the northwest edge of Lawrence County as well. Yeah, and Alex, we also still have this severe thunderstorm warning until 445. That includes parts of Baldwin County into southern Hancock and Washington County. When the National Weather Service had issued this severe thunderstorm warning, they had put the tornado possible tag on it. And some good news, at least in the time being, is that we are not seeing anything that's too tight at the moment, but we are watching one little area just south of Milledgeville, uh, just a little uh, you know notch there in the, the velocity field. In fact, let me look at that compared to the radar. Yeah, it's, that's that's not anything. So it's some good news. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing anything. Uh, I just I, I'm saying that based on the location of where it is in the storm structure, uh, but we're not seeing anything that is rotating in this uh, general area as we speak. So there is, you know, Hancock County, Washington County. So have a pretty good storm moving into Sandersville right now with a ton of lightning but still not looking at anything too imminent there, even though this warning goes until about 445. But as we were saying earlier, let's just kind of zoom out and look at what's going on. You know, the storms start in really Milledgeville, right? And they go all the way down to Cuthbert and they go actually past that. But that's uh, just uh, you know where, where we're looking at in the moment. So while we have this tornado warning and the storm that might have dropped a tornado over Warner Robins, the storm's just getting started in Perry. Mm -hmm. If you're in Unadilla, you're just now beginning to hear the thunder. So we're going to be watching this whole line down to the south as it moves through Cochrane, Eastman, Dublin, Soperton, and eventually over towards the Wrightsville area uh, here in the next little bit. But of course, our focus for the time being going to be that tornado warning um, that is in uh, Twiggs, Wilkinson, and Lawrence County. And also, if I could briefly just mention, I want to kind of show some of the areas that have been put off the tornado watch. So we are giving them the all clear from severe weather. Still the possibility of hearing a rumble of thunder to uh, a very light thunderstorm, if you will. But you can see areas further up to the northwest that we're talking about these areas that were set to expire at 4 a.m. And now it is 4 a.m. and they have expired. So we're talking Taylor, Crawford, Bibb, Jones, Putnam, and then Jasper, Monroe, Upson, and Lamar counties. All of you have already seen what you were going to see with the severe weather event and are in the all clear, but we still have all these uh, areas in the pink and the red that we are uh, going to continue to monitor as it does have a general tilt uh, of it moving northwest to southeast. That's the general track that we have been showing you on future views. So we'll continue to update you as counties get trimmed off that tornado watch as well. Yeah, Alex, and some good news from the National Weather Service. So um, they're waiting to for the possible rotation to clear the radar site, and then they're talking about dropping the warning. Uh, which I, I think is a, a, a good idea. We haven't seen anything too tight since um, whatever this was came across the Okmulgee River, so that's some welcome news. Um, and you know, obviously the heaviest part of the storm, kind of in this general area, we're looking at the wind map right now. But if I flip this over to the the velocity or the re reflectivity here, right? You got Jeffersonville, Danville, uh, where this warning is, and I, it, you know. We're not looking at anything imminent in the moment. Technically, the warning still stands, but we want to see what this rotation looks like just on the other side of that uh, uh, of, of the radar site there in Jeffersonville. And then uh, it looks like they're going to make a decision there. Um, so here's the thing. If you are in Warner Robins right now, we had the possibility of a tornado touchdown earlier near Watson Boulevard in 41. Uh, it's still not a good idea to be going outside. We are still getting lightning strikes over Warner Robins as we speak. Um, and yeah, you don't want to be outside while it, uh, while there's lightning, right? It's just uh, something you don't want to do. But for the next little while, that uh, this warning going to continue. And as Alex was saying, the severe thunderstorm warning is about to drop off the screen, which is some welcome news there. I had a, a feeling that they would replace this with a severe thunderstorm warning if they do drop that tornado warning there, because still the winds are strong in this. Is that what that is? That would be funny if it was. Uh, uh, it looks like they updated this severe thunderstorm warning up in Hancock County. Yeah. 
That's what that was. So if you're watching from way up there at Hancock County, just north of Sparta, right? We had this warning clip you earlier and they've basically just extended that now, including Warren County. That's moving, generally speaking, more so towards the Augusta area. Alex, I'm also noticing uh, they've trimmed back this Baldwin County warning in yes. Hancock and Washington counties, which is some welcome news as all of this continues to move off to the east. Let's see what this is. Oh, OK, so the first beep was the updating of this warning. This beep here is the Hancock County warning. That's what that is. I'm seeing okay. more warnings to the north and northeast of us right now, but uh, not really having an influence here in central Georgia. We're really trying to turn our focus further down. Obviously, there's still tornado warning that we're uh, trying to figure out. It's moving directly over our Jeffersonville radar, so kind of hitting a little bit of a dead spot, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of not getting any readings directly on top of our radar. But we're going to continue to monitor that as it treks into southern Wilkinson County and then kind of shifting our focus further down to the southwest where you see this line of lightning all over down in Macon County and continuing to trek uh, further to the east and north or east and southeast rather into southern Houston County, Dooley County, areas like that in the middle portion of central Georgia. Uh, and Alex, as we were just talking about earlier, we were looking at the tornado watch. So uh, we had a tornado watch initially that went until 4 a.m. that has been allowed to expire. Mm -hmm. uh, watch 83, which is what you see here, this red shaded area continues until 8 a.m. But what you're going to notice is, right, the storm's moving through most of Houston County right now. Your tornado watch is not actually going to go until 8 a.m. It's going to be canceled before that. I think uh, you're going to see this trimmed back as these line of storms move through. But if you are in Putnam County, Jones, Jasper, Monroe, Crawford, Taylor, Ups, and you got woken up by the thunder about 30 to 45 minutes ago, you're, you're in the all clear. You've been removed from the tornado watch, but it does continue for places like Washington County, Lawrence, Bleckley, Pulaski, Dodge, down towards Wilcox County and over uh, towards uh, Wheeler County. Montgomery County is here for the next little while. Crisp County, Dooley County included in this. So. Um, at least as we're seeing the line go through, right, we're able to give some all clears, which is always a welcome thing to do. If you're looking at the radar, you can just draw an all clear line from Sparta through Milledgeville, Macon, and uh, down towards really the Taylor Macon County lines, not so much Montezuma just yet, but you know, Taylor County, all clear, Crawford County. And by all clear, I mean you're done with storms for the day, which is uh, good news uh, as well. But uh, so 415, we technically have about 15 minutes. Was it 4.30? I keep forgetting the time. 4.30, yeah. yeah. Uh, technically, I have 15 minutes left on this warning, but I have a feeling we're going to see this drop off and be replaced with a severe thunderstorm warning uh, for the next little while. And that severe thunderstorm warning also coupled with that warning is definitely going to go off here in about a minute or so. They said okay. it was going to expire. There, there it goes. goes. Yep. <clears throat> All right, so we're left with just the tornado warning, which technically has 15 minutes left on it, um, but we're waiting to see what they do with it. Uh, I... Let's check out the velocity. There's nothing tight, right? Like the, there's a couple interactions mm -hmm. in there, but nothing tight, which is some good news. And if we look at the, the potential debris and we pull this back, right, there's what we saw in Warner Robins. And then nothing really picked up in Twiggs County after that. So mm -hmm. I don't think we've had a tornado on the ground since Warner Robins. Um, and that's now lifting up into Wilkinson County. So in twigs right now lifting into Wilkinson, but nothing uh, that's that's jumping out at me on on this map, at least, which is again, good news. Yeah, just along uh, uh, Highway 96 moving into southern Wilkinson County, right? So uh, beginning to dry out now in Macon rains almost over lightning's mm -hmm. moving on. Uh, so some uh, that's another piece of good news for the time being. Uh, so here's the thing if we see this change. You know, we saw this severe thunderstorm warning that's going to expire up to the north. That's Hancock County into Washington County. I think you're going to see a replacement here, but it's still storming down in Perry. I tell you what, let's see if we can pop up the Perry sky cam yep. because we were watching lightning off in the distance earlier. And now what we're seeing is the storm right over yeah. Perry. I got it right here. So uh, this is facing uh, generally north kind of westward uh, is what we have a view of. So as you can see, very, very strong winds. Uh, blowing the camera around frequent lightning, just like we saw up here in, here in Macon uh, about uh, 20 minutes ago or so. Every couple seconds, a lot, a lot of lightning is associated with this, and it looks like uh, still seeing the strongest effects of this storm as it does move across the Georgia National Fairgrounds. So that it, we're talking more so it's into the southern portions of Houston County uh, along I-75, still seeing strong thunderstorms, not necessarily severe warned or any tornado warned storms, but you can still see that these strong thunderstorms are packing upon regardless of their severe criteria. 
Yeah, and Alex, the other interesting thing that we were watching in uh, Perry earlier is we have, we have flags over here towards the interstate, but we also have some here. And what I've noticed is the direction of the wind has shifted, right? The, um, the, the front is coming through. And you know, we're, we're beginning to see that with the storms moving through with the wind now coming in out of the uh, uh, out of the west and uh, blowing the storms in. So that's uh, always something interesting to watch. And I do have something good to report. That tornado warning is gone now. So the okay, National good. Weather Service has canceled the rest of that tornado warning stretching into Twiggs County, into Wilkinson County, uh, northern Lawrence County. Um, so that is uh, good news right there. There definitely looks to be a lot of uh, disorganization with this now. As you can see, lightning really falling apart around Jeffersonville and such. Uh, so that is good news for those areas, but also continuing to monitor strong storms nonetheless, even if they aren't warned. Uh, gusty winds, frequent lightning, heavy downpours, the possibility of hail still existing as well. So uh, regardless, uh, still not out of the woods yet in terms of the bad weather, but out of the severe uh, weather, that is good news that the tornado warning has uh, been set to expire here about 10 minutes earlier. Right, so uh, no more tornado warning. So if you are in uh, Twiggs County, if you are in Wilkinson County, uh, where you were uh, in your tornado safe place, you can come out of there now. Uh, but we are still watching the threat for storms, right? We're not giving the all clear. We're just uh, canceling the tornado warning, which means there's not an imminent threat of a tornado. We do still have just barely this <laughs> severe thunderstorm warning up in uh, Washington and Hancock counties and Baldwin County as well. I expect you're going to see that drop off here in just a little bit. And if that's the case, what we're going to do is is, um, you know, be warning free for the next little while, which is uh, good news there uh, here in central Georgia. So if that's the case, then we would uh, sign off here. Uh, but so we're, we're going to see if we can drop that real quick. And um, in fact, let me ask about that. Alex, you want to see what's going on up there while I check in with, with this warning? Yes, so uh, this severe thunderstorm warning right yeah, here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, so Baldwin, Hancock, uh, Hancock, and Washington. I'm going to check the chat. Let's see if they have issued any statements uh, necessarily about this. I'm seeing canceled, severe thunderstorm warning. Um, this looks to still be Hancock, Tolliver, Warren. So now that's further up to the north. Um, we're talking Hancock, Washington, Milledgeville. Yeah, right. I'm definitely seeing the disorganization with this uh, when I put on the winds. Not seeing any uh, indication of notching uh, or rotation whatsoever. Um, so probably continuing to monitor this as it does move through. But right. in well, this polygon, I mean, a lot of disorganization, not even heavy rain per se. Yeah, the storm's moved out. Mm -hmm. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's past Sanders, uh, past uh, Deep Step north of Sandersville now. So uh, I expect we're going to see that drop off, in which case we will be warning free. And um, we, uh, it's good news, right? We don't want warnings, but we are still looking at uh, you know, a lot of lightning down in the Perry area. That's going to be moving into Cochrane, Wilkinson County over towards Washington County uh, and uh, still even in Macon County right here for the next little while. So we're going to see, uh, see what we can do there. But I tell you what, so here in Macon, Warner Robins, you know, things coming to an end. We're beginning to see the tornado watch trim back. Um, so what we're going to do now is return you back to uh, the CBS programming, and we are going to rejoin you here for 13 WMAZ morning coming up at 5 a.m. Of course, if anything happens, and just as it did, as I was saying that, yeah. there's something <laughs> happening. <laughs> so hold that thought. We do have a new severe thunderstorm warning. This replaces the tornado warning. This is going to be for Wilkinson County, Southern Washington, Johnson, and into Lawrence County. Jinxed it, didn't I? Yep, you did. Uh, so Johnson, Lawrence, Washington, Wilkinson, and that's going to carry us until 5 o'clock. Uh, let's uh, see if we can check the details on this. Uh, it's going to be no tornado possible tag on that, which is good. Winds 60, uh, moving east at 50. So let's draw mm -hmm. a track on this real quick. To answer your question, Justin, yes, we are. Uh, so Nicholsville, 422, Tucker's Crossroad, 438, Wrightsville, 448, Bartow, 501, Wadley, 506, Midville, 520. Of course, that is outside of the warning polygon here because this only goes for the next 40 minutes. Um, but that is where things stand, at least at the moment. So that's a new severe thunderstorm warning here until 5 a.m. Okay, as I was saying, <laughs> We don't have any more tornado warning active in central Georgia. So what we're going to do is sign off of 13 WMAZ. We are going to continue on our stream. So we're going to um, just a note for our production staff here. We're going to continue out of the control room on our stream. 
uh, until five o'clock. And, um, and of course, if another tornado warning is issued, we'll jump back on the air here and let you know. But for the time being, we're going to send you back to regularly scheduled programming on CBS. And if anything changes, we'll be right back here on 13 WMAZ with the updates. There we go. Okay. okay. Hello, everybody. Long time no see. All right. Mm -hmm. So the severe thunderstorm warning continues. Johnson and Lawrence County, Washington and Wilkinson until 5 a.m. So this is the storm that potentially produced a tornado um, back into Warner Robins uh, near Watson Boulevard and uh, Carl Benson Parkway over towards the Galleria and uh, US 41. Uh, Amanda, if you are still there, can you see it? Uh, do we saw that power outage map up by chance of anybody? Okay, I, I know they can hear me, so maybe they'll, they'll pull it up here in just a little bit. Um, but uh, over towards uh, you know the, the Warner Robins areas where we had that potential tornado touchdown, but this severe thunderstorm warning continues for Johnson, Lawrence, Washington, and Wilkinson counties until 5 a.m. Alex, I'm going to send it over to you real quick. I, I, see if we can drill it down in some mm -hmm. of the, the spots that are going to get this storm next here in central Georgia. Yes, exactly. So we can go ahead and draw a little timeline here. Um, once again, this severe thunderstorm warning was our newest one issued an extension of what was initially a tornado warning. There has been uh, disorganization, like Alex has said, but we still have this severe thunderstorm warning. So on the latest note, uh, it was said that this storm was be to be moving at about east at about 50 miles an hour. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a northeaster easterly kick right there, but 50 miles an hour. So once again, just reiterating how fast the system is really moving through central Georgia. And as you can see, probably should draw that polygon a little bit bigger to cover the area. So let me do that one more time. Uh, so I'm going to do like such and then continue that to a general easterly direction, 50 miles an hour. All right, so time frame, we're looking Nicholsville, 428, 444 up to Tucker's Crossroads. 453 span 454 Wrightsville over in Johnson County. So that really showing you how fast it is going to be moving. So in about the next 30 minutes, extending about a whole county over into the middle of Johnson County and Wrightsville 502 going to be in Pringle kite at 509 and then Blundale at 517. And this is a rough drawing of uh, the areas that will be expected next in the severe thunderstorm warning, but also uh, not even going as far as this polygon does indicate. So if it were to go a little bit further to the northeast, we're talking areas like Oconee, uh, Tennell, and uh, areas south of Sandersville going to be impacted by this. But still, once again, just because you're in this polygon uh, doesn't mean that is where you are going to get severe thunderstorm impacts. We are also seeing strong thunderstorms all around embedded in this line uh, that a cold front is passing through uh, into the early hours this morning. Uh, the good news is we have seen disorganization in terms of lightning, in terms of tornadoes. That was initially what the storm was, a tornado confirmed on the ground in northern Houston County. So it is de-intensifying, if you will but at the same time still not out of the woods severe thunderstorms do pack a punch with 60 mile an hour wind gusts at times and that can damage a lot of stuff like tree branches power lines uh, also especially with all of the rain that we did receive in the month of March about eight inches the ground is very very saturated so going to be very easy to blow big trees over uh, as that ground is very loose in nature right there but that a tentative time frame for this severe thunderstorm warning that is continuing to stretch into kind of the eastern portion of central Georgia here. And let's go ahead and pull up the velocity winds right here. Uh, not seeing any indication of any notching or kinks like we have been talking about and like we did a uh, monitor that formed in uh, Peach County into northern Houston County. So that is good news right there. And I want to take a look at the hail. So yeah, not getting many hail signatures. We uh, are also monitoring the fact that we could get inch in diameter hail, which is severe hail uh, by severe thunderstorm criteria, but not seeing any signatures of it. So that is one less thing to worry about in terms of the effects with this severe thunderstorm. So as you can see, once again, the severe 
severe thunderstorm warning going until 5 a.m. So for another 34 minutes, we're talking Johnson, Lawrence, Washington and Wilkinson counties here. And when I say Lawrence County, the very, very northern edge, as you can see, is uh, what is included in this polygon right here where my arrow is pointing to. So really more so we're talking the southern end of Wilkinson County, the very southern end of Washington County around Oconee and Harrison, and then extending into probably the northern half of Johnson County into Wrightsville. So the timing of that here within the next 30, 45 minutes or so going to continue to trek east and northeasterly. As you can see, this box not going directly east. So that's why we're kind of giving it a little bit of a northerly direction with that. But I'm going to zoom it back out real quick, give you a big picture view of what's going on. So as you can see, northwestern counties in central Georgia, you guys are in the all clear. There's nothing behind this main line of storms, which is good news. Some areas to the far north really didn't see much in terms of any severe thunderstorm warnings whatsoever. And then other areas uh, like Taylor County, like Crawford County, that's where we started off uh, the early morning hours with uh, our uh, severe uh, storms over to the west and those areas are finally in the all clear. But even Warner Robins, the, where we did have a confirmed tornado on the ground for a little bit, you can see Southern Houston County is still getting uh, kind of kind of the blunt force of all of this line of storms. So let me take it to our Perry Sky Cam real quick and see how it's looking there. And it definitely has since cleared up. You can still see flashes of lightning. The camera is not blowing around anymore, which is good news. The heaviest stuff has passed uh, the Georgia National Fairgrounds down there in Perry, uh, kind of in the central southern part of Houston County, taking a live look at I-75 there. But you can see traffic moving rather slow as it was a beast as it, does, it did kind of move on in, even if it didn't necessarily have the severe tag uh, associated with this, but we're continuing to monitor stuff to our southwest. And as you can see, another warning down there where you see Cuthbert uh, on the western edge of that box and really just want to stress how wide these uh, boxes are. So as you can see, stretching from the Alabama Georgia state line all the way over to Lake Blackshear. That is a large severe thunderstorm warning and really just showing you how fast these storms are moving. Every storm that we've been timing out uh, with our little polygon has been at least 50 miles an hour moving towards the east. We've had some moving at about 65 miles an hour, so very, very fast moving storms, which is good in terms of the heavy rainfall that we are getting, not going to necessarily create any flooding risk per se, but also uh, really just trying to get on out of there, but also really covering a wide area with these severe thunderstorm warnings. So for Central Georgia, once again, the only warning we do have currently is the severe thunderstorm warning for Johnson, the northern northern edge of Lawrence County, Washington County and Wilkinson County, and that is going to exist until 5 a.m. So another 31 minutes on that warning right there, and it does look like lightning kind of looks to be decoupling, uh, not necessarily uh, all being concentrated in one area like we have been seeing as the storm did move into our western half uh, and it does look like at least some of the intensity of rainfall is going down kind of into those yellow colors uh, not the red and orange yeah, yeah alex uh let's uh, give some good news all clear for areas that are behind the storms now so milledgeville macon um, warner robins right on the edge there peach county we're giving the all clear almost all clear in macon county uh, uh hancock county we technically still have that warning actually there it goes <laughs> just as I pointed to it. Uh, so Hancock County, all clear, Baldwin County, Jones County, Bibb, Peach, uh, northern parts of Macon County and Taylor County. Basically, if the rain has stopped in your location, that's going to be your all clear from the severe weather. It looks like we do have a new special weather statement for Washington and Wilkinson counties for some strong winds. That's going to be this northern part of the storm there uh, near Sandersville. So still looking at a pretty good storm moving into the Sandersville area here in the next little bit. But then also this severe thunderstorm warning continuing uh, for extreme northern portions of Lawrence County, but into Johnson County, Southern Washington, and of course, Southern Wilkinson, where it is right now. And um, that is that for the time being. So let's drill this down in here. I kind of want to focus on the, the Southern area real quick where we yeah. don't have a severe thunderstorm warning, right? It's still storming in Southern Twiggs County. You got a storm moving into Cochrane right now. And Perry, the lightning continuing. You were just looking live at the Georgia National Fairgrounds with Alex Pry a moment ago. Mm -hmm. Also in Dooley County, right? We, we kind of like, you know, been focusing on the, the northern side. The storm is just now arriving in Dooley County because of the orientation of the line. So a lot of lightning moving into Unadilla, some lightning uh, north of Vienna. America saw the, some heavy rain here just in the last little bit. And the severe thunderstorm warning continues down to the south, uh, down near Cuthbert. And that extends back over uh, almost to the Lee County line right there. Um, Kind of curious to see what the National Weather Service in Tallahassee does with that one. It looks like they just updated this warning here, um, yes. our warning in Wilkinson. 
cut off a little bit of it. It extended over to the western border of Wilkinson, but now it looks like they kind of cut that off. Right, yeah, so Nicholsville and on pretty much. So from Oconee to Nicholsville is where the heaviest part of the storm is. So Harrison, Wrightsville, um, you know, looking at a pretty good storm rolling in, some strong winds uh, over the next little while, or the next uh, 30 minutes or so. This warning goes until 5 a.m., um, and that's what we're looking at, at least for the time being. And uh, going to be watching for this here as uh, it, it once it crosses this line right here. Once it crosses the Washington Johnson County lines into Emanuel County or over toward Louisville, that is when it uh, begins to clear the 13 WMAZ area. Um, so yeah, it continues there, 60 mile an hour winds and maybe some hail below penny size. So yeah, uh, this uh, whole event um, we were talking about the potential for hail of uh, really all severe weather types, but it was on the lower end. And it's good to note that we have not seen that this morning across central Georgia. So uh, some welcome news there, but we have definitely seen the winds. And when we flip this over to the velocity here, you can see some of these heavier gusts embedded in there. But also, Alex, drawing my attention down there in Dooley County, looks like you got a pretty good gust of wind coming through there as well. Yeah, uh, let me pull that back up. Um, yes, definitely uh, a lot. And maybe a little bit uh, trying to give a little notch in there, if you will, if you kind of make it, if you want to try to find something right there. We kind of look for that curve S shape uh, embedded in this kind of main line of wind. So nothing really uh, definitive there that's uh, really showing us, hey, there's uh, rotation popping up right there. Uh, but worth uh, noting that it is uh, there and something for us to continue to keep an eye on. Uh, also, those notches indicative of tornado formation. And then I think with our new radar reading that we just got, Kind of looks like that went away just a tad bit, uh, but still really good news that these winds are straight line right now and they are continuing to be straight because when you start to get the spinny stuff, that's when you start to get the circulation that form uh, into tornadoes. But I want to go ahead and note one more thing real quick here uh, in terms of uh, what I'm seeing here. So we're starting to see more lightning flashes kind of pop up. You can see them right there in real time, those bright white flashes there on the radar and starting to become more intense and more concentrated in nature further down to the southwest where we did have a lot of moisture available uh, down there in terms of dew points in the 70s, a lot of surface instability present. So starting to see a little bit of coupling in there, just going to show that, hey, like we kind of did see a little bit of a break in it in terms of lightning intensity, in terms of rainfall down here, but it can just as easily pop back up as it does go away. As you can see, areas further down to the south and southeast of central Georgia really haven't had uh, much interaction with weather whatsoever uh, so far in this outbreak. So they are running into a ripe environment for uh, lifting of all that potential energy at the surface for all of that instability, all things crucial to the formation of severe thunderstorms. So we're continuing to keep an eye on that uh, as it does or the southwestern portion of this line of rain does trek into central Georgia, but it looks like I would say now Macon County looking to kind of get into the all clear area and then about the northwestern half of Houston County looking kind of be in the all clear, but still to the southeast of Perry areas in Houston County still seeing so that strong main line of rain, uh, gusty winds and such. But the good news is we only do have this one warning right now established for uh, Wilkinson into southern Washington, northern Lawrence and also uh, the kind of northwestern portion of Johnson County, uh, kind of right there where Wrightsville is. So, uh, Alex, have we seen anything uh, noteworthy about this warning? Um, not about uh, this warning, but I do have an update from Houston County for you. So uh, the EMA director, Chris Stoner, says uh, that they have some limbs and debris down around 41 in Centerville that clues, crews are clearing, but overall it's the same they see with most strong thunderstorms. Uh, just a reminder on this, um, you know, yes, that is the case, but that is also the type of damage you would see if you had an EF zero. So we're going to um, check in with the, the weather service and see what, what they do in terms of, you know, going back and checking if there was a tornado. Uh, but the, the Houston County EMA is also on standby to respond to anything else. But uh, as Alex was talking about, I pulled this up earlier. Um, I want to emphasize that this tornado watch still continues right down mm -hmm. to the south. So, you know, we, we were looking at Unadilla just a moment ago. Well, Dooley County's on a tornado watch. So it's Pulaski, Wilcox, Dodge, Telfair, Wheeler, Lawrence, Trutland. And uh, this whole line, as it continues to move through, is going to have the chance for spinning something up just as it potentially did in Warner Robins, um, at which the National Weather Service was calling it a confirmed tornado. We did see the correlation coefficient drop out, um, which is uh, usually that sign back in Houston County. Uh, and luckily we're not looking at anything too imminent. And Alex, just looking at this at a bigger picture now, this, this line just looks 
not as strong yeah. as it did two hours ago. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're starting to see fading in the lightning colors. So, I mean, obviously a lot of these lightning uh, marks that you are seeing, if I can really zoom into a closer view of them. So if they've happened a while ago, you can see them starting to fading off. So areas like that you're seeing over there south of Marshallville, those lightning strikes are very faded in nature, very gray. And the new lightning strikes are more of a bright white, if you will. But you're not seeing as much lightning really covering up all that rain that you do see on the radar like we did earlier. And I mean, when I tell you it was a lot of lightning, Alex and I have both been talking about it the whole morning. It was a lot of lightning. I mean, it was happening just about every two seconds, uh, maybe even closer together than that. So that is good news in terms of seeing the lightning uh, de-intensifying, but also just looking very broken in nature. It looked more like a definitive line of rain that is moving through. And you can still see the darker colors embedded within this whole line of rain, but it does look to be very disorganized. And then when I pull up the velocity, what we're really seeing is, yeah, not too many indications of any notches or rotation per se, uh, but we're continuing to keep an eye on that uh, just every couple minutes because obviously uh, the one in Houston County really did pop on up very quick and we did see it uh, indicated on here on the relative velocity. So uh, like I said, these storms can pop up just as quick as they go away and there's still plenty of energy ahead uh, to the south and east of this main line right here. So I'll kind of draw uh, an arrow right here, if you will. So we're still talking to areas like Lawrence County, uh, into Bleckley County, Pulaski, Crisp, Wilcox, down to Dodge, Telfair, Wheeler, Montgomery, etc. So all those areas still not in the all clear. We're still uh, going to be kind of waiting a couple hours, if you will, especially areas that haven't seen any rain uh, thus far. But the good news is this is a very fast moving system as it does trek through central Georgia. Yeah, that's, uh, it, again, yeah, the, the good news. That's what we're looking for in this, right? Um, so a lot of lightning in Perry right now. It seems like it's been thundering there for maybe the past hour. Not, not a lot of people uh, sleeping well. Um, as you get over towards um, Washington County and Johnson County, that's where we still have that warning. Bleckley County, the storm just now getting started there. Over towards Eastman, uh, still looking at the rain beginning. The heaviest of the stuff not there just yet. It looks like Alex just popped up the Perry Sky Camera there. It's been, what, two hours of lightning now? At There's, least, yeah. <laughs> 239 to 439, that seems about right. And like I said, wow, that was a big one right there. But yeah. like we said, every couple seconds, I mean, this yeah. is frequent, frequent lightning. Exactly, and uh, it's going to continue for at least the next 20, 30 minutes there in Perry as the storm continues to push away. I'm curious to see, uh, actually, I have not looked at this yet, how much rain it thinks we've gotten in the past 24 hours. It's probably not going to be a ton, but a decent amount. It's going to take a second to populate here. Yeah, so oh. a couple of spots of over an inch. Right, so you, anytime you get that green color there, so uh, there it goes updating. So, you know, Warner Robins got an inch of rain, uh, Peach County down towards Perry, over towards Irwinton, uh, not so much up to the north, but a little pocket there in Baldwin County as well. And again, the rain's coming to an end in this area, so that's going to be kind of the, the rainfall total, if you will, but a lot more rain over two inches once you work your way up towards the Atlanta area, over towards Coweta County, Henry County, and Newton County, also uh, parts of Putnam County there over towards uh, Tolliver County, uh, getting uh, uh, over two inches of rain as well. So rain continuing to fall across parts of the area. And then uh, we flip this back over to the radar here. So again, giving some all clears, Hancock County, um, Irwinton and East in Wilkinson County, uh, almost all clear in Twigs, all clear in Warner Robins from everything. No more severe weather threat there. All clear in Peach, Crawford, Monroe, over towards Upson and Macon counties. Um, and uh, that's going to be uh, the case with as things stand now, it looks like they just updated that flash flood warning up in Atlanta because it's glowing. Just kind of curious to see what. All right. So uh, now if we take it down to our southwest, just outside of our viewing area, but I know tornado warning has been issued. This is for uh -huh. Lee County until 515 right there. So uh, what they're thinking, a storm indicative of some rotation down there. And I'm going to go and pull up the radar. Yep, you can definitely see what we're oh, talking yeah. about, the notch, the kink in there. And when you start to get the darker blues, that's more intense winds. But as you can see, really kind of taking a little bit of circulation right there. So a tornado worn storm down in Lee County, but that is also directly to the west of Chris County, Lake Blackshear uh, areas that are getting closer and closer to our viewing area west of I-75. Uh, let me go ahead and read a little bit more about that. Alex, you want to take over for a second? Yes. Um, so I'm asking the National Weather Service right now if they're going to pull this into crisp, right? Because the, so the reason why um, if, if Bonnie, if you could pop me up real quick. Right? Yeah, there we go. Um, 
<laughs> You're good. Um, the, the reason why I'm asking is because, so this tornado warning was issued in Lee County. This is covered by the National Weather Service in Tallahassee. So when this tornado warning was issued, they literally could not go beyond this line. In a normal situation, you're going to see this um, go into Crisp County, which I have a feeling that we are going to see here in just a moment. Um, and there's no clear sign of a debris dropout, but there is very much that rotation there. So this is going to be just south of Leslie um, and, uh, and Lake Blackshear uh, moving into Crisp County. Um, so between Cordille and uh, Araby here over the next little bit. Uh, let's see if and uh, Marshall and rain. So right along Georgia 300. I'm going to go ahead and tell you now if you're in southern Crisp County and you're watching us, um, now is the time to probably be headed to your tornado safe place. So if you are south of Cordill in Crisp County, uh, that, that's going to be I-75 right there. And then eventually, I mean, if, if they do issue this warning, I think there's a distinct possibility it gets pulled into Wilcox County as well. Uh, just given the, the speed of these storms, you're, we might see that here in uh, just a moment. Oh. Do we know what the, that beep is? Cancel severe for Lawrence and Wilkinson. All right. So that's that severe thunderstorm warning we were talking about up there, but in the moment, we want to watch this in Lee County that's about to move into Crisp um, because, you know, I, like I was explaining just a second ago, when they issued this, when the National Weather Service issued this tornado warning, it literally could not be issued beyond this red line. And uh, I think you might see uh, the Peachtree City office follow up and, and tack on a, a box there. Yeah, and I'm trying to draw a little polygon right here for it. So, um if we pop back over to me real quick, I got a little timeline for this uh, tornado warned storm that is in Lee County right there. So obviously giving it a little bit of a north northward kick. We're talking Lake Blackshear uh, here at 445, Cordial 455, uh, Araby, or Araby, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing that, 5 o'clock, Double Run at 512, Rochelle at 519. Cramer at 523, Abbeville at 529, and then 537 getting all the way over to Rhine in southern Dodge County. So once again, stressing how fast these storms are moving whenever they are popping up. As you can see right now at about 445, getting close and close to Lake Blackshear, but then here in less than an hour, already going to be two counties over in southern Dodge County. So really, really booking it across the southern portion of our viewing area. And again, uh, if this is to go into uh, our central Georgia, Georgia area, then we will uh, cut into CBS and uh, live stream uh, right here on 13 WMAZ. Alex? Yeah, so I'm um, going to continue to watch this here. Uh, this, so the, the, the notch that prompted the National Weather Service to issue this is about to cross uh, Lake Blackshear and uh, move into Crisp County. And the good news, at least in the moment, let me flip this over to the storm relative. This is the base. There we go. All right, so we are going to pause real quick and we are going to interrupt programming on 13 WMAZ and we need to do that as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. That's really good in Northeastern. Yeah, Bonnie, we, we need to go on the air. All right, northeast at 55 mile an hour. All right, so Bonnie, while you get that plugged up, I'm gonna, okay, actually we're gonna do it now. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Alex Forbes. We are coming on the air with a new tornado warning for Dooley and Crisp counties, also Sumter County included in this. If you are in Vienna and Cordill, Lake Blackshear, most eminently, I need you to go to your tornado safe place. That is away from doors and windows. Put as many uh, walls between you and the outside as possible. Lowest level of your structure. We have a storm that is capable of producing a tornado with a huge uptick in lightning right over Lake Blackshear as we speak, and it's moving towards the northeast at uh, about 50 miles an hour. So this is going to be southern Dooley County, so really from Vienna and south and northern Crisp County. So from the Cordill area up into uh, the, the the, the Dooley County line right there. And um, a meteorologist Alex Pry is here with me, and we've been watching the storm for the past five minutes or so. Alex, look at just that huge uptick in lightning oh, right yeah. over Lake Blackshear, and that's typically what we see 
uh, whenever we get into a situation like this where we have a uh, rotation that is capable of producing a tornado again moving into northern Crisp County and Dooley County included within this tornado warning that is going to run until 530 this morning here in central Georgia and again that's going to go all the way over uh, to the Wilcox County line and uh, and continue actually almost to Pulaski County as well so it's going to be right near Lake Blackshear let's see if we can get some roads here in Crisp County where I need you uh, in your tornado safe place most imminently so that's going to be right along highway 280 uh, Georgia 230 in fact a lot of the rotation is right near 280 and 230 right now this looks like a lot of farmland just north of 280 but still if you know that you are to the northwest of Cordill right so if you go out of Cordill and, and, and you go to the west you go towards Lake Blackshear and you're north of highway 280 that is where the storm is headed next you're probably hearing a lot of thunder right now a lot of lightning over Lake Blackshear Here's US 41 here. If you live along US 41 north of Cordill, uh, that's where you need to be where you need to be headed to your tornado safe place right now. And also Interstate 75 as you head up into Dooley County, which uh, part of this area includes. And in fact, that's going to include the Richwood area right there along 41 and of course Vienna. So if you are in Vienna, seeing a pretty good storm right now, still need you to go to your tornado safe place. You're within the, the polygon here. It's this red line kind of like that. So Vienna included in that. Here's Highway uh, 215, of course, Interstate 75, and then 257 coming out of Eastern Crisp County into Dooley County also uh, at the moment. So we are going to throw a track on this. It's moving towards the northeast at 50. Is that right, Alex? Northeast at 55. Northeast at 55. So let's do that real quick. And, um, you know, the, these storms are booking it. Uh, so Cordial 454 here in the next few minutes, Pineview 515, Abbeville 525, Eastman 537, Chauncey 542. Obviously, we're getting well outside of the tornado warning here, but that goes to show you where we are seeing the rotation in the moment and where it's headed over the next hour or so. This warning only goes for the next uh, 45 minutes. So um, that's where things stand at the moment. But again, Cordial, if you are in Cordial in northern Crisp County from Lake Blackshear to Interstate 75, I need you in your tornado safe place right now. I want to flip things over to the uh, potential debris and uh, see if we're seeing anything and there's nothing clear. Um, what we are seeing is, you know, it, some altering with, of, of the uh, radar beam, if you will, but nothing that is jumping out at me screaming tornado in the moment, which is um, some good news. And if I back this up real quick, we haven't seen that yet, but we are seeing uh, a tightening in this rotation here uh, that is moving over Lake Blackshear as we speak and into Northern Crisp County. So uh, that's the situation right now. So again, uh, we're saying uh, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Uh, I, I've got some steps for you here. So this is again going to be Chris and Dooley counties inside lowest floor of a sturdy structure away from doors and windows, putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible. And that is going to be again Chris Dooley and then also Sumter County included in this, even though that's technically just outside of our area um, here over the next few minutes. So again, Again, Dooley County, that's going to be south of Unadillas, really Vienna and south, but it's going to be mainly in Crisp County right now where we are watching um, this tornado warning that's going to continue for the next 40 minutes now. And Alex, this is our, our second one mm -hmm. of the day. We uh, saw a tornado warning earlier in parts of Houston County. We believe we may have had a touchdown. Uh, because the correlation coefficient that, that lofted debris tracker we were looking at uh, dropped out, but uh, it looks like uh, Dooley and Crisp counties are kind of in line at the moment. Yes, exactly. And uh, just one thing kind of worth noting, this is moving into a relatively untouched area of central Georgia so far in terms of available energy, available moisture. Uh, areas further down to the south and uh, southeast of central Georgia really are the areas that we haven't had interaction along this main line. We might have had a few pop up showers just due to the sheer amount of moisture that we've had here in central Georgia. But as you can see, moving in a generally northeasterly direction and booking it, like Alex said, 55 miles an hour and that moving into Southern Dooley County. So let's see if I can kind of give you a more local view right now. So I would say according to our relative velocity right here. So you can definitely see uh, the circulation right there indicated by the blue uh, blue colors that you are seeing the blue pixels up against the green pixels. So moving over towards kind of the east of Lake Blackshear between Lake Blackshear and Cordial, if you will. So those areas Highway 280 definitely be in your tornado safe space if you are not already. And as Alex said, into your most room that you do have in your house away from windows guarded by as many walls that you do have and that taking that 
that general northeasterly direction. So going to cross 41 uh, I 75 here uh, relatively shortly and get into southern Dooley County as well. So Richwood, Vienna, and then other highways passed on the eastern side of I 75. We're talking Highway, I believe that is 215, Highway 357 in southern Dooley County, uh, that intersection of those two. You are directly in the path and the polygon of this tornado warning that is moving through. And as you can see, I mean, a lot of rotation right there indicated by the notch there on a relative velocity and the uptick in lightning also very indicative of how strong this storm has become. But moving generally northeast, so uh, hopefully it will interact with kind of an area that has already used up a lot of that potential energy to continue uh, the strong form formation of a storm, but the good news is we haven't seen any uh, reports of a confirmed tornado on the ground. As of yet, you would see that right to the right of the tornado warning that is on the top of your screen right there. But once again, this tornado warning still extending for another about 38 minutes until 530 in the morning right now. This goes for Chris in southern Dooley counties right now. And if this is to hold together, then we could be looking at areas such as Pulaski County, northern Wilcox County, Pineview, getting close to Hawkinsville. Uh, those areas being extended in this tornado warning as of right now. Let's take it back to you, Alex. Yeah, that's right. So this warning goes until 530, but it, I, I'm just looking at the speed of it, engaging it in my head. This is going to be way outside of the warning box by 530. So um, you know, for the next little while, again, if you are in Cordial, Northern Crisp County and Southern Dooley County, we need you in your tornado safe place. I want to give you some roads here in Dooley County. Um, you know, obviously we have 75 and 41 right here, but if you are along 257 headed into Dooley County, uh, also right along was that 215 headed from Vienna over uh, to the east. That is where this uh, potential tornado is headed. Um, let's me zoom down in here. And uh, so there's the rotation there. Uh, let's see if we can get some more roads. Um, Parham Road over towards Spear. Spears Christmas Road, Payne Road. Again, this is not where the tornado is right now, but it, where it has the potential of going. Lambtown Road over towards Lollaby Lane, Georgia Pine Drive, uh, Dooley High Road. Okay, so uh, potentially over towards Dooley High School, Tippettville Road, Howard Farm Road, Noble Gen Road, Broadway Road, Tippettville Road. I think I said that. Um, Coppage Road and Cason Road. Um, and uh, worth noting, National Weather Service saying that the rotation and Chris doesn't seem to be holding together very well, but they're going to let this tornado warning continue. It's this spot right here where you see these blues and the greens right next to one another uh, is where if we are seeing anything right where that would be. So we were talking about the, the being over Lake Blackshear. It has now moved past Lake Blackshear and is between the lake and Cordill uh, and it is continuing to move towards the northeast very quickly uh, towards Dooley County here over the next few minutes. So let's draw a track on this. Um, what I'm going to do is draw it not as far out in time, though. Let's do 30 minutes because I don't think it's going to hold together that long. And uh, northeast at 55. So Cordial about 459. Richwood 502. Tippettville 514. Here's Pineview at 520. Of course, that's on the Flasky. Uh, Wilcox County line there. Um, so, you know, outside of the tornado warning, really expecting this to move out of the tornado warning box by 510, 515, even though this warning goes until 530. Um, so, you know, gonna continue to watch this here for the next little bit. Let's flip back <coughs> over to the lofted debris and see if there's anything. Yeah, I, I was curious about this earlier. I don't think, you know, I, I know we're seeing a color differential right here, but I don't think this is lofted debris because what we're seeing is that continuing past mm -hmm. Lake Blackshear. Um, and that's not what that looks like. You know, if, if we were seeing debris in the air, we would be seeing uh, like a, it literally looks like a circle of whites and blues on this map. And uh, we are seeing some discoloration, but we're not seeing that circle, uh, uh, which is uh, something good to know. Also worth noting that the tornado watch does continue. I want to show you the counties uh, included in that. This is going to be Macon, Peach, Houston, Twiggs, Wilkinson. Even though some of these counties back here have been are, you know, are in the clear, we are still continuing it down to the south. I, I say they're in the clear because the storms have moved through. The watch has not been canceled yet. But we're talking about Dooley, Pulaski, Wilcox, Dodge, uh, Telfair, Wheeler, Trutland, Lawrence County, Johnson counties. Uh, this continuing until 8 o'clock unless it's canceled earlier by the National Weather Service. So, um, so at least, you know, some good news, at least uh, for the time being in, in Crisp County is that it doesn't look as strong, but the warning still there nonetheless. And that warning extends into Dooley County and uh, we'll see if it extends beyond that. But as this was getting its act together, uh, we noticed a big uptick in the lightning, which is what we saw near Lake Blackshear. 
and you can still see that lightning within the past 10 minutes. That's what we show you here. And the, the, the part of the storm that we're tracking between Lake Blackshear and Cordell moving uh, towards Interstate 75 as we speak. So if you're in Dooley County, uh, Vienna and South, I uh, need to head to your tornado safe place. If you're in Crisp County, you're just waking up. You're hearing the tornado sirens. If you are in Cordell and around Cordell and then to the north, that's where we need you to head to your tornado safe place. And uh, we'll see if we get a continuation of this here. Not quite sure um, if we will, uh, because, you know, again, just a couple things jumping out at me. That huge uptick in lightning not continuing at the moment. The, the velocity doesn't look as good, right, in the sense of, a, a tornado like we don't want a tornado but whenever we're talking about this and, and the sense of being good is being favorable for a tornado to develop but if we're seeing anything i think it's going to be right there between lake blackshear and cordial um, that's going to uh, continue here for uh, this tornado warning that's going to run until 5 30. Yeah, exactly. I, I think you're exactly spot on with that. We are seeing a lot of disorganization with this and notice you're seeing the deferring colors right here around Cordial. Obviously, we think over to the west is really where uh, if there is a tornado, that is where the center is located in the center of rotation. But you can see all that blue paired up against that green on those pixels right there. That's very broad. OK, that's way, way too big to be a tornado right there. So we're not really seeing anything indicative uh, or indicative of notches, rotation uh, per se anymore. More, and that was really the most impressive thing that we have been seeing with this warning so far. And the National Weather Service uh, does seem to be uh, hinting at the rotation is not really holding together uh, per se. But as you can see, still frequent lightning, heavy rain associated with this. And we are still going to treat this like there is a tornado on the ground because this is a tornado worn storm and it is trekking over uh, pretty populated areas in terms of Cordial I-75. I know that it's about to be 5 a.m. right now, so a lot of people might be getting up to make their morning commute to work. You definitely do not want to be on I-75 in southern Dooley or in northern Chris County as this tornado worn storm is looking to move over it here in the coming hours or so. But once again, this warning extending for another 32 minutes until 530 in the morning right now, and we will let you know if anything changes with that, according to the National Weather Service. But Alex. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, you know, Obviously, at working our way towards 5 a.m., a lot of people about to be heading to work. If you are thinking about heading out in Dooley or Pulaski counties, even Wilcox County, here in the next little bit. I'd pump the brakes for at least just the moment and let these storms come through and then maybe head out. We do still have this tornado watch continuing until 8 a.m. Again, uh, I do expect some counties to be trimmed out of this here in the next little bit, but really I want to focus on Johnson, Lawrence, Bleckley, Pulaski, Dooley, Crisp, Dooley and Crisp, where we have the warning right now, but the watch continues too. Down towards Wilcox, uh, Telfair, Wheeler, Montgomery counties also included in this for the next little while. So we are coming up on five o'clock. Um, here is where the line of storm stands now moving into the Dublin area as we speak. There's Cochrane over towards Pulaski County, uh, Dooley and Crisp counties. And just noticing, you know, another uptick in lightning in that little area. So we're going to see what we do with that uh, here in the next little bit. But that tornado warning for Dooley and Crisp um, continuing here for the next 30 minutes. So we've been tracking storms all morning. We're coming up on five o'clock uh, here in the next 20 seconds or so. And what we're going to do is kind of reset. We're going to uh, join Caitlin and Frederick and uh, start 13 W. UMAZ morning and then we're going to come right back to storm coverage while this tornado warning is still active, which is planned for the next 30 minutes, but we'll see whether or not we make it to that point. So again, uh, watching uh, Dooley and Crisp counties, uh, Wilcox and Pulaski over the next little bit. 13 WMAZ morning starts now. Uh, good morning for those of you who are just joining us. We are in severe weather coverage right now. We have Alex Pry and Alex Forbes doing team coverage as we continue to track these storms coming through central Georgia. And it's been quite a long morning to say the least. They have been on the air since about 3.30 this morning tracking the latest watches and warnings. Guys, what's the latest? Yeah, Caitlin and Frederick, we are continuing to watch the tornado warning that's down into Dooley and Crisp counties this morning. I do want to go ahead and give you an all clear, though. If you are in Macon and Warner Robins, even Perry right now, we have seen the storms come through and uh, it, that's it. No more storms today. You're going to be looking at a big cool down in windy conditions, but this tornado warning continues technically for the next 30 minutes. The rotation looked better on it when it was back over near Lake Blackshear, but where it is now is crossing Interstate 75 in Crisp County, somewhere near Cordial, uh, and then moving potentially into, we'll say, southeastern uh, Dooley County now. So if you are, uh, say, th there's Vienna over towards Lake Blackshear, if you are north of there, I think you're okay for the time being. Uh, but the, the, the tornado warning continues for Vienna and southward. And um, we're going to see, I, 
I, I honestly don't know if they're going to extend this warning. Let's check out the velocity on this now. This is where the winds would be. So looking at right over the Cordial area, if we're seeing anything, it would be that right there. Uh, just off the top of my head, looking at it, if this were a standalone thing and had not already had a tornado warning on it, I don't think they would have issued a, a warning given this frame. But since we have one active and that rotation did tighten up uh, previously, I'm curious to see whether or not uh, that's going to be extended. And if they do it, it would probably be in the next 10 minutes here as it approaches uh, the Wilcox County line between Pineview and Rochelle. So as of now, Wilcox County not included in a tornado warning. Not quite sure if you're going to be. I uh, hoping you're not. Same with Pulaski County. Uh, but as things stand now, we're focused on the, the Crisp and Dooley County areas as we speak. So tornado warning, of course, Northern Crisp County. What that means is lowest level, most interior room away from doors and windows, putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible. And I see Alex has drawn a track on this. So let's send things over to him um, and see where the storm is headed. Of course, the warning is going to stop before the track ends, but and in fact, they just updated it there. So it looks like they're continuing. Um, let's uh, get a check of this track though. Yes, yeah, so exactly. They just decided to extend this uh, tornado warning that we do have and we're talking areas right here that you see on this timeline. Once again, areas to the very end of this polygon that I did draw more than likely not going to see this as we are indicating uh, weakness within uh, this rotation now. So 513 Tippettville, 519 Pine View, uh, 529 up in the Hawkinsville, Pulaski County, Bailey's Park at 536 East Eastman over in Dodge County at 541, 550 Chester, Cadwell at 553, and Rents at 558. And once again, I don't think a lot of those later times that you kind of see past about probably the Hawkinsville timeline right there. So right. more so immediate danger is going to be uh, the southeastern corner of Dooley County into the northwestern portion of Wilcox, maybe creeping into Pulaski County, but right now centered in northern Chris County. Alex, we'll send it back to you real quick. Yeah, that's right. And um, I, I do also want to note is this red box here? That's a that's the tornado watch. Okay, um, let me turn that off real quick because that could be confusing. Okay, so this tornado warning, this red outline here, I, I've turned on the potential lofted debris, and we've seen this continue here for the past little bit. You see the color drop out near Cordial, which is where the rotation is. But notice how that continues past Cordial, right? The radar is up at Jeffersonville. You see it spinning around, and it sends a beam right about there, right? And it's it, it, the the discoloration continues past that, which is why I don't think we are looking at debris in the air, which is good news. We don't want debris in the air, but the tornado warning continues. Nonetheless, this is going to be uh, between Vienna and the county line and then also the Cordial area. Uh, so a little south of Cordial up to the Dooley County line as well. Um, if you are watching us from Lake Blackshear, that's where this uh, picked up really about 15 minutes ago. And we can give the all clear now to Lake Blackshear from a tornado threat. You've been removed from the tornado warning but it does continue for Cordial and Southern Dooley County. And again, we were talking about it earlier and now after five o'clock, some people beginning to head to work. If you are doing that in Pulaski County, Wilcox County, hold off for just 10, 15 minutes. Let's see what happens with this. And uh, then, then we'll give you the all clear. So, you know, Rochelle, Pineview, Abbeville, over uh, well, even as far north as the Hawkinsville area, I'd say just hang on for a little bit if you can. And uh, let's see what happens with this as it continues to move uh, towards the northeast at, at very quickly at 50, 55 miles an hour. Um, the, the speed on this was 55 northeast at 55. Um, so, you know, it's not going to take long <laughs> for it to move through your area. And uh, we're going to see what happens here with this. Uh, in the next little bit. Let's flip back over to the velocity map here. Again, this is going to be the winds. If we're seeing anything now, I think it's going to be just past the Cordial area, uh, meaning downtown Cordial, right? If you're over in eastern Crisp County, you could still have a Cordial mailing address. You could be in Cordial, uh, but you know, it, 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 the, the downtown area is uh, at least uh, past the tornado threat. It's going to be that right in there, which again does not look great. That's me looking for something um, if, if there's anything there. If, so if you're in Vienna, I think you're OK now. Let me flip this back over to the radar and just um, confirm that. Yeah, so if you're in your tornado safe place in Vienna, we'll say east or west of Interstate 75, west of 75 in Dooley County, uh, you're all clear. Um, and uh, really, if the rain's beginning to let up, I think you're, you're kind of using that as all clear. But um, just kind of highlighting what we saw happen was this huge uptick in lightning over Lake Blackshear as the rotation was getting going. Uh, you can still see that there within the past 15 minutes. And we're not seeing that type of lightning now where this rotation would be, which is 
in this general area, but you know, still looking at some strikes back up in the Dooley County and northern Wilcox County over towards the Pine View area. So if you're in Pine View, you're in Rochelle, might be getting to hear thunder, uh, definitely seeing some lightning off in the distance. That was one thing I certainly noticed about earlier this morning. We were looking live from the Georgia National Fairgrounds over towards uh, Taylor County and Macon counties earlier, and we were able to see lightning from quite a distance away, and I think that's continuing this morning uh, here in uh, Wilcox County and then probably over into Dodge County as well. If you're in Eastman and you're looking over towards Pine View, probably seeing some lightning in the distance, might even be hearing some rumbles of thunder off in the distance as well. Um, and uh, that's uh, the situation, at least for the time being. Let me back this up a little bit and show you why the warning was issued. It's just to show you how it looks now versus what it did look like when they pulled the trigger on this. Oh. And it looks like they're going to replace this with a severe thunderstorm warning, which is some good news. So this severe thunderstorm warning, we technically still have the tornado warning, but they are extending this via severe thunderstorm warning for the time being. And that is going to be for Bleckley, Crisp, Dodge, Dooley, Pulaski, and Wilcox counties until 545 for severe thunderstorm moving northeast at 55 miles an hour, 60 mile an hour winds. And what they're going to do, it looks like, is you know, the storm is moving into the severe thunderstorm warning box. And on this warning, they've kept the tornado possible tag on it. So, you know, it's a step below a tornado warning, but the storm's still rotating. Uh, but for now, they're going to let this ride with a severe thunderstorm warning into Dodge County. So this is going to include Hawkinsville, Cochrane, Eastman. Already raining heavily in Hawkinsville. The heaviest of the storm is going to come past you in Pulaski County down to the south, but it does look like, generally speaking, towards the Eastman area here over the next little bit, we're going to be looking at a storm that's capable of producing a tornado moving into that area. Alex? Yeah, exactly. And one thing I really want to note with all this that we do have going on over here to our southwest or southwest edge of this line of main rain that is moving through all these areas that you're seeing Dodge County, southern end of Lawrence County, Wheeler County, Telfair County. All these areas are relatively untouched when it comes to all their potential energy and moisture that is available for this main line of rain to move on through. So as you kind of just saw, we did see an uptick in lightning. Uh, we have seen a bunch of lightning already earlier in this morning and really kind of just covering all of the rain that we now kind of see on the radar that I'm showing you right here. But when this line of rain, as you can see, it's kind of dissipating, kind of disorganizing right now. But as quick as they disorganize, they can pop back up just as quick. So I really want to note that we are wanting to keep you updated as we continue to go through the early morning hours tonight or this morning, as you can see, 5 a.m. right now. And our really severe weather threat not necessarily ending until closer to about 7 a.m. for our far right. southeastern counties. But the good news is the northwestern half of central Georgia is in the all clear right now and we're continuing to monitor this, the current tornado warning right now, Alex. And another piece of good news, there is no more current tornado warning. This is going to be just now the severe thunderstorm warning. They've canceled that warning um, and we're going to watch this now as it moves towards the northeast. But again, I want to emphasize this severe thunderstorm warning has that tornado possible tag on it. So this is not an all clear from a tornado threat. Obviously, the watch continues as well. And the reason why it has this tag on it is because the storm, if I flip this over to the velocity here, is still rotating. We still have like you know, a little bit of a notch right there. We still have strong winds on this side, not so much on that side. And um, we're going to watch this here over the next little while as it moves now into Wilcox County and eventually far southeastern Pulaski County on into Dodge and eventually the Eastman area uh, here over the next. Um, this warning goes until 545, but at least uh, for the next little bit, uh, just kind of want to see what it does. I never saw the correlation coefficient drop out over Lake Blackshear, which means I don't think we had a, a touchdown. Um, but you know, it could have happened and, and the radar didn't pick it up. So that, that is certainly a possibility and something, um, that we're going to be watching for here in the next little bit. So this is where things stand now. 545 is when this warning expires. It is now 510 in the morning. We still have this tornado watch in place for central Georgia, Dooley, Chris, Pulaski, Wilcox, Dodge, Telfair, Wheeler, Trutland, Lawrence, Johnson. Those are the counties I would really focus on uh, for the next little while here as this line continues to move through central Georgia and then it will begin to get out of here uh, for later on. But uh, because we do not have a active tornado warning, what we are going to do is here in the next few minutes, and you guys tell me when you're ready, we are going to kind of fall back into 
13 WMAZ morning in, in terms of how that show uh, uh, goes. Um, and then if we get another tornado warning, we will jump back in and we will stay uh, continuous until that happens. Um, but uh, for now, we have this severe thunderstorm warning and you guys just let me know when you're ready to go and um, we can uh, do that. Let's see here. Okay, um, so as things stand now, Bleckley, Dodge, Pulaski, Wilcox till 545, a lot of lightning in and around the Pineview area. Pulaski County over towards Dodge um, is where this is headed next. And again, this, that broad rotation is kind of in uh, uh, northern Wilcox County. All right, uh, we're going to send things over to Caitlin and Frederick now. I think we are going to go to the uh, talk about what's going on with power outages. All right, thank you, Alex. Thank you guys for all your hard work this morning. We're going to take a look at these power outage here. This is the Flint Energy's outage map. We're seeing about 1,200 customers without power here. If you look closely, it's really uh, closely monitored in that central area where we were talking about some of that heavy stuff moving in about 4.30, 4 o'clock this morning. So you can see that's where the bulk of those outages are right now. Uh, and just um, we also have heard from um, the EMA director uh, in Houston County, Chris Stoner. Uh, when we talked to him about 30 minutes ago, um, or so ago, he said that there weren't any confirmed reports of any kind of a touchdown at the time. Of course, the National Weather Service is going to be out observing that later today. But he did report that there were some limbs and some debris down in that area. So we, of course, have a crew on the way there. Freeha Abrar and one of our photojournalists are going to be headed to Houston County trying to uh, kind of get the scope of damage in that area and give us reports. And hopefully we should hear from her coming up this morning at 6 o'clock. Uh, remember, just a good reminder to you, a, remor a warning is a level up from a watch. You know, we've been seeing warnings and